session of NASA goes to hell. Um, this week we're going to um, start out uh, by following another player who uh, who's uh, rejoining the party. But uh, before that, we'll do a quick uh, recap of last week. So uh, last week, uh, Thokjima and Alba Salazar were uh, individually, but at the same time, approached by uh, the visage of uh, an old man uh, with seven golden canaries flying around him, who revealed himself to be Bahamut, the platinum dragon, um, and he tasked them with uh, going to the Hellmouth of the Nine Hells to collect some allies before coming back to uh, see him at his uh, temple at the uh, um, in, at Mount Celestia in the uh, Seven Heavens. Um, at the same time, uh, well, during that time, uh, Hagrid, Leovin, and Cassius were finding themselves um, breathing life again, uh, albeit in a uh, a very strange place. Uh, as they woke up, the the sulfurous air and heat you know, burned their lungs, stung their eyes as they took their uh, their first breaths since being eaten by a dragon, or at least killed by one. Um, after waking up and speaking with their new uh, benefactor, uh, Bell, uh, former demon lord of the Nine Hells, uh, he told them that uh, they had been brought back to life uh, in order to help rid him and the Nine Hells of Tiamat once and for all, which lines up with what Bahamut wanted uh, Thok and Albus to do themselves. Um, so upon waking up and meeting with Bell, uh, Bell revealed to uh, to Hagrid that um, he was acting as Hagrid's deity, uh, not Kiri Jolith. Um, after uh, a couple of battles outside the Hellmouth from Thok and Albus, and another battle inside the Hellmouth from a demon that wanted to uh, enslave the uh, the three fleshy uh, people uh, wandering around through the first level of Hell, um, the party met up. Uh, got some introductions out of the way and headed uh, north to uh, the town of Silvery Moon. Uh, along the way, once they reached the northern wilds of uh, of the Sword Coast, though, they were um, att attempted ambush happened uh, between the party and some green hags, uh, who just happened to be working with the adult green dragon, who was the demise of those three party members, Chuth. Uh, after getting an opportunity to exact some revenge and get some sweet, sweet um, catharsis, uh, the party took some things from the corpse of the of the dragon and made their way to Silvery Moon, uh, where they uh, started uh, kind of going about some business, asking around about shops, uh, preparing to uh, do make the hike up uh, to the uh, the top of Mount Celestia. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to travel back into the nine hells, where um, a uh, a half orc is also coming to in the same room that Hagrid and and Cassius and Leovin came to in. Uh, Crispin, you feel yourself uh, breathe air again. Um, the air around you is is hot. It's dry. It's smoky. Uh, the room and all the light is bathed in this strange reddish glow that seems to emanate from from everything everything gives off this reddish vibe to it um, as you sit up and look around you notice that the room that you're in is empty um, you vaguely recall uh, after 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 remembering that you left your oven on while you were in the serpent hills and wor working your way back home, uh, eventually the suggestion spell wore off, and you'd forgotten what it was that you were actually doing on either. It's like when you walk through a doorway and you forgot what you went into that room for. Once the suggestion spell wore off, you forgot what it was that you were doing before and what it was that you were heading to do now. So it seemed like the next best logical conclusion was to go find uh, some form of civilization and you know try to uh, get back to your your core quest. Of tracking down some sweet drugs. Yes. <laughs> so the last thing that you remember is uh, being in a tavern, uh, you know, making a couple deals with some people, uh, and a, a night that got more and more hazy as it went on. 
you're not sure how long ago that was, but... And you've woken up in strange places before, but this is this is something uh, yeah. different. <laughs> I don't remember it being this red. <laughs> so as you uh, as you look around and kind of take stock of the room that you're in, uh, a small uh, a small demon walks into the room. He looks at you. He goes, "Oh, you're up now too. Well, you're late, and Lord Bell has already left." Um, I'm he... late. I don't even know where I am. You're you're in hell. Makes sense. Okay, <laughs> go on. <laughs> but you know, it, w you're supposed to meet up with some people. When you come back, I'm sure Lord Bell will explain it then. So um, you just gotta you just gotta leave, leave, leave hell, um, and then come back later. Uh, I I think you're supposed to hang on. He like fishes. He like reaches into a little pouch next to him. And he unfolds this big note, and it says, um, uh, "Yeah, you're supposed to uh, leave through the hell mouth." Uh, which is three blocks that way and then two blocks to the left and you turn right. It's right. You can't miss it. There's real daylight coming out of there. Um, and then you're supposed to head north to, uh, uh, does it say Sliver Moon? And then, uh, Crispin, Silver you actually moon. you actually recognize uh, that he's he's talking about the town of Silvery Moon. Okay. Um, so, um... Is there anything you'd like to do before setting out? Anything you'd like to um, potentially try to? Would ask you this? mind giving me those directions? Because that was a lot. Like two <laughs> rights, then a mouth. <laughs> Once I get out, I can find Silvery Moon. But <laughs> it's like, all I right, need to go through that. Uh, I'll, I'll walk that you to the door and give, give them to you again. I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. So he Thank he uh, he walks you to the front door of this this pretty actually it's a fairly large estate. You know, being in hell, you wouldn't think of uh, yourself as being in. Uh, what appears to be a, a mansion of sorts, but here you are. And is it the uh, classic fire and brimstone smell going on, or yes. is it actually pleasant? Okay. Yes, uh, as you get outside, you see that the buildings um, are sort of twisted and bent. Uh, the architecture is not straight and square cut like it is you know, above ground. Um, even the, uh, the wrought iron uh, gate work surrounding the mansion that you're leaving, the, the bars themselves are twisted and bent and sort of curling towards the direction that they're supposed to go, but everything is sort of bent. Um, every once in a while, uh, a wind will blow through, and it's more hot and stifling even than the air already was, and it brings with it the sounds of you know, screams and, and torture and chains awesome. and whips. Yeah, uh, and the guy, he leads you to the front gate. He opens it up. It's like, he says, all right, so it's three blocks that way. Then you make a left for two blocks, and you turn right. Three blocks <laughs> left, two blocks right. Okay. <laughs> um. So, do you? Uh, what do you want to do now? Do you want to follow his directions, or? Um, I just want to. I'll, I'll ask him. Um. So the terms about me coming back is that whenever I feel like it is. Or am I just free to go forever? Uh, you know the uh, the instructions are pretty unclear. I feel like uh, probably wherever it is you're going, you'll figure you'll figure out how uh, how it is. Uh, Lord Bell expects you to come back and win. Okay, so it's a suicide mission. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I've done my fair share of those. Um, do I have my gear on me? Yeah, actually, all Everything the gear that you intact? had, uh, every all the gear that you had when you left uh, is still intact. Uh, no new scars or anything like that. Uh, as uh, people who uh, were previously resurrected will will tell you there that they have, because um, a couple track marks. Yeah, drug overdose doesn't really leave <laughs> too many scars, you know. Um, so, um, uh, go ahead. Just one more thing, little man. Can you give me a description of who I'm supposed to be meeting up with? Uh. I don't have anything, but again, you'll probably recognize them when you see them. So they're going to try to kill me. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So uh, as you make your way through this uh, this level of hell, um, not being too familiar with the uh, the ins and outs of, of planes outside of the prime material plane, you're not sure um, what level you're on or, or even you know what, what it's called, anything of the socioeconomics of, of this particular level. But you do follow the directions, and sure as shit, there it is. There's a mouth. Uh, it, it looks like a giant demon head, uh, and its open, gaping mouth is just this doorway, where, like, instead of you seeing hell through it, you see a nice verdant wood. Um, okay. So you walk through. There's a couple demons um, 
patrolling uh, around this mouth, um, you get the uh, you get the idea that um, they're probably there to make sure that anybody who accidentally discovers this uh, doesn't live to tell about it. Um, and does that include me? No, it does not include. Okay, you. <laughs> <laughs> most people coming out um, are allowed to do so. Um, it's mostly to prevent uh, you know those people who were. You know, like hunters and trappers going through, uh, you know, the the reaching wood uh, down in the southern part of the Sword Coast uh, to keep them from um, spilling the little secret of this Hellmouth. You know, uh, okay. while while deals with humans and stuff like that are something that demons definitely seek out, it's on their terms, not some random wanderer. Mm. Um. So, um, go ahead and make a make a survival check for me. Oh, that's not good. That is a two minus something, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, no, two plus one, three. Okay, so um, you you get started north, and you, you know fairly well which direction is north, but you're not really heading straight north. You wind up kind of zigzagging through some towns and stuff along the way, um, basically just kind of falling into old habits of, you know, kind of being more of a leaf on the wind and just going wherever it blows you. Uh, but you do make your way north um, after a couple of days, and you find yourself... Um, Walking through the woods uh, to uh, Silvery Moon, um, or Sliver Moon, as the demon said, um, and uh, along the way you actually see this uh, adult green dragon corpse that's been, uh, well, it doesn't have a head. Uh, it's missing quite a bit of its skin, uh, but it's it's undoubtedly a green dragon corpse nonetheless. Uh, it's just sort of like rotting off the side of the path. Uh, you see various uh, creatures have come to uh, to try to. Th those who have strong enough jaws to pierce the hide and, and take partake of the meat are uh, it's definitely starting to pick itself pick it clean, and the uh, the open side where there is no uh, no scales on it, you can see that uh, the the circle of life is in full effect and nature is starting to reclaim this body. Um, so uh, as you uh, as you get into Silvery Moon, uh, we're going to kind of pan back to the other party because you're going to arrive. Roughly around nightfall. Okay. Um, the rest of the party, you guys have been um, going around Silvery Moon, uh, looking at shops. Uh, Albus has been asking around about uh, Austriel Silverhand uh, pretty relentlessly. Um, between between telling people uh, how much of a wizard extraordinaire he is and uh, asking about uh, Austriel Silverhand, uh, you guys are... You're you're getting through some things. Uh, I think there was a couple of things that you guys purchased last time. I don't remember off the top of my head what those things were, um, but just sort of preparing for your your quest um, um, through the uh, the south bank of Silvery Moon um, to the river uh, Rauvin, and then westward towards Mount Celestia. Um, again, um, I know you guys sort of asked around a little bit. Um, none of the locals in Silvery Moon can tell you much about the hike that you're about to undertake because most people. Um, they don't really try to hike above the clouds there. Um, at a certain point, though, while you guys are shopping around, uh, a a well-dressed um, uh, male, uh, he looks, uh, Elvis, as you look him over, uh, he does appear to be uh, of the wizardly persuasions. Um, so he walks up to you guys and he says, So the rumors are true. You lot really are here in Silvery Moon. That's... That's pretty impressive, I must say, to have people who are being commemorated with statues and all that uh, in our uh, sleepy little village. Uh, it's it's quite a, quite an honor. Uh, you must be uh, you must be Albus Salazar. Yes, yes, I am. Albus Salazar here, wizard extraordinaire. I'll just throw that in to make it sound better. Well, uh, you're. Um, your achievements really do they do uh, precede you um i'm turn uh, hornblade i am the uh, the current high mage here at silvery moon uh i know that you lot have been asking around for austrial silverhand um i uh i'm sorry to inform you albus that uh, uh lady silverhand god rest her uh, about 100 years ago stepped down as the high mage tell these tell these people that they can get a bit uh, a bit curious for sure, uh, the way the time sort of dilates and dances to and fro. But um, listen, uh, because of who you are uh, here in uh, in Silvery Moon, um, 
I've I've received uh, permission really from the Lord of Silvery Moon to uh, put you guys up in the uh, the royal apartments. You'll each have your own room, uh, stay as long as you want, and uh, food and drink completely on the house. Um, really, nothing to worry about there. As I accidentally <laughs> slipped back into Australian. <laughs> hey guys, did you notice it, how dropped by. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so you guys, um, uh, while, uh, while Terran, uh, Hornblade, uh, the new, uh, not really new, the High Mage of Silvery Moon, uh, isn't really in a position to offer you guys, uh, much in the way of, uh, resources or anything like that, uh, you guys do have, uh, pretty fancy digs to, uh, to stay in while you are here in Silvery Moon, uh, you know, going through whatever business it is that you need to do here, um, it doesn't appear as though he seems to be privy to, uh, anything other than who you are and the fact that you guys were asking around for uh, for the former high mage uh, can I pull turn aside for a second sure uh, I just like to go and like yeah so um, I'm sure you've done your homework on us and I'm pretty sure you know some of the major events to happen to us recently uh, would I be safe in assuming I don't need to share that information I'm familiar enough with your uh, your accolades, yes? Not just our accolades, but our um, pitfalls as well. Are you meaning uh, a couple of your untimely demises? Um, theirs is more untimely. Mine was a little bit more expected. Oh, be that now. as it may. You, you're, nope, you no, no, no. Are... Oh, 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 oh. Let's not have that be too loud now. <laughs> now... Let's just to say that I climbed out of the pit, and I'm looking for something to celebrate such a success. Where would one go to find items of celebration? Items of celebration. Uh, what type of celebration you, are we talking here? There's uh, food and drink oh, and oh, oh, pleasurable oh, company? Oh, oh, we're not going to put words to it. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he, he thinks for a minute gets an idea, starts fishing around in his robes, and he pulls out um, a coin of sorts. It looks to have some sort of um, sigil on it. You're not sure if it's um, uh, a sigil of, uh, of, the, of Terran Hornblade himself, or maybe just that of uh, his position of High Mage. Um, but he hands it to you, says, uh, well, whatever it is you are looking for, this can probably uh, get, you, get you moving in the right direction when it comes to um, procuring whatever it is that you are looking for. <laughs> you are either the worst or the best at what I'm asking for. And I'm not <laughs> sure which, but thank you. <laughs> As I sit there and kind of break, these, break the sidebar. Okay. <laughs> um, so as you guys are kind of um, moving through the town, uh, does anyone else have anything they want to speak with Taryn Hornblade about? So, so, so where are the party supplies? I will. Um, it really, it's it's what whatever it is you're looking for, you you can find it. Uh, I I gave uh, something to your friend over there that uh, can help you with uh, actually obtaining uh, the these items. But uh, it really, it without knowing more about what it is that you want, um, I can't offer you too much. Um. So what would you guys would you guys like to go check out the royal apartment? Uh, you want to keep shopping around a little bit? <laughs> uh, I I really don't need anything, so I'll just do whatever everyone else wants to do. Okay. Um. Uh, at this point. Given the nature, um, t uh, not Tyrannus, uh, Cassius <laughs> is going to take out the coin and he's going to hand it over to Ivan there. And he just says, Hey, do me a favor. Go ahead and equip yourselves with whatever you need to do. Um, I need to go see a man who happens to uh, have a good stiff drink for me. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> um, I. I take the coin and look at everybody else. Uh, what is this for? 
I am already gone. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I would uh, go around, I guess, to the shops and just show this thing to people and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, some people, uh, some people seem to recognize it and uh, give you a bit more um, deference. Uh, they can't really move on their prices too much, but um, some some of the people don't. They're like, "Oh, that's quite a fancy trinket you have there." Um, but uh, a couple of the merchants uh, are able to kind of point you towards people that have uh, let's call them party supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the merchants, though, Leavin, as you're asking around, um, as you start to walk away after, uh, you know, holding up the coin and sort of asking about uh, party supplies, um, he uh, he says, uh, ma ma "Master Druid, um, but please, if if you have a moment." Um, and uh, you see, as as the rest of the party kind of you know continues uh, traversing through the city, um, uh, Hagrid definitely appears to be. Uh, Lost in contemplation and not uh, not truly present in the moment uh, as it stands, but um, he tells he he says um, that he hears that you've been asking around about uh, uh, a cloak of protection that he has for sale, and he offers to give you the cloak and a little bit of extra gold if you'll help him out. Uh, just for the coin. No, uh, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the cloak. I'll give you a little bit of extra gold. You can keep keep your fancy bobble. Um, I just I just need a little bit of help. Are you are you interested? Of course. Okay. So, as it turns out, even though Silvery Moon is a city for those of good inclinations, uh, it's not immune to possessing a criminal element. And that criminal element can operate seemingly fairly efficiently if they work hard to stay in the right pockets and have the right leverage on the proper people. There were a group of drow who were living in the city, working normal day-to-day -day jobs in a perfectly normal capacity. Um, when, uh, when the former high mage stepped down, uh, the drow saw this as an opportunity to leverage their position with the new high mage. Uh, which seemingly allowed them to begin a criminal enterprise of sorts. They've somehow managed to continue leading this double life and have spent most of their evenings moonlighting as thugs, strong-arming strong merchants such as myself, and apparently have uh, some of the guards and soldiers in their pockets because I've asked for help from the guards and they just laugh at me and say that uh, we're in Silvery Moon and there's no criminals here. And um, they're... They're making it very hard for me to, to earn a living. Uh, most of my money uh, goes towards them for protection. I'm not even sure what it is they're protecting me from, because it's they, they just do whatever they please with me. Um, I've been kind of quietly asking around, though, and maybe doing a little investigation on my own on the side, as much as I can without getting caught. Uh, but I think that they have, they have a stronghold somewhere near the city walls. It doesn't seem to take them long to, to get wherever it is they're, they're going, and any reactions that they have seem to be fairly quick, so it can't be too far from the city. Um, it could be under the city even, I'm not sure. Um, but please, uh, any any assistance that you can offer, uh, I'd be greatly appreciative. I, I will give you the cloak of protection uh, if you can bring me any sort of, of, of proof or anything like that that you've been able to help me. Uh, okay. and, uh, again, I can give you a little bit of extra gold, but I don't have a lot um, because of their extortions. Right. Now that, that sounds like something we can, uh, do something about for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I look forward to hearing from you again. Then I'll, uh, go back to the rest of the group. Okay. Um, so, uh, you guys, uh, with, you know, minus Cassius as he's, uh, Cavorting, um, you guys uh, find your ways to the find your way to the royal apartments. Um, you guys are taken by uh, uh, you know uh, sort of like bellhops uh, to your rooms. Uh, they offer to to press your cloaks and things like that. Um, they tell you that uh, dinner will be ready in uh, in you know an hour or something like that. Um, it's fairly inconsequential. You 
you guys being who you are, you can pretty much walk in the kitchen and grab whatever you want. Um, Hagrid, you see this as an opportunity um, once you've been uh, put up into your room to uh, to make make an effort to at least to, to try to pray, to to meditate, uh, to find out exactly what the nature of this relationship with Bell is. So. Um, as you meditate, Hagrid, setting yourself up in a similar fashion as you've done so many times before when uh, beginning the process of communing with Kiri Jolith, you take a deep breath and you calm your mind, purging all thoughts, reaching out for Kiri Jolith. You spend about an hour doing this. Um, your frustration starts to bud uh, since you haven't had to work this hard to actually commune with Kiri Jolith since your early days as a paladin. Uh, as you're frustrations start to get close to bubbling over, uh, you are about to give up, you start to hear something louder that seemed to just be background noise before. As you focus on this a little bit more, it's a man's voice, strong and confident. As you focus on the voice more and more, you can't quite make out what they're saying. You can't, you can't sort of tune your ears to it to make out what the words are, just that there are words happening. Uh, it sounds almost as if there's some sort of like fluid uh, between you and the voice. Um, almost at once, uh, the inky blackness of the back of your eyelids is blasted away by what sounds like a muffled sort of divine wind. Uh, the blackness wasn't the dark of the room or the back of your eyelids. It was smoke. Beyond the smoke is a bright white light. You don't hear the voice anymore, and the light fades after a few seconds. You open your eyes, and you take in the room around you. After the strange communion, you didn't receive a message, but you did get something. Almost like the seed of an emotion buried deep in the recesses of your mind. It's small, barely above dormant, but it is there. Hope. All right. Uh, I'm going to contemplate what has just happened, uh, take the time to uh, remain in my meditative state. Um, but this time I'm just going to just mull over what happened, just uh, absorb it all and uh, consider what may have just taken place could be a sign of where my path lies and how it will affect me. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, as you as you uh, continue your meditation, uh, you start to hear, uh, and everyone actually, you guys start to hear uh, some bells ringing throughout. Uh, uh, despite having not spent much time, especially recently, uh, in uh, sort of the uh, upper echelons of society, you guys do recognize this as the uh, the dinner bell. Um, so. Having been on the road for a while, looking forward to a nice warm meal, you guys do make your way down to the uh, the dining hall where quite a feast has been set up. Um, um, is there anything that you guys want to say or do or talk about during this uh, this meal? Um, so apparently there's this shadow criminal organization uh, run by Drow around here. Um this shopkeeper uh, asked if we could take a look. They might have a stronghold somewhere nearby. And we can get some goods. Yeah. Uh, that sounds fine to me. Uh, all evil must die. That's the way I look at it. Anybody else up for seeing what we can do about this? I guess uh, at this point, Albus is the only other person uh, present. Oh, right. You know, I'm sorry I'm having some technical difficulties with some other stuff, <laughs> and my attention has definitely not been there. So my apologies. I got some stuff I got to take care of sooner than later, and it's really aggravating me that I just can't do what I want to do. Nothing is ever simple. <laughs> that is true sometimes. Um, Thok Dima, um, <clears throat> is on board. Um, he's definitely down to, uh, you know, 
kill some things, really, anytime. Um, at this point, um, uh, Leaven, uh, why don't you uh, start working on how you want to try to investigate this um, while you're thinking about that. Um, let's uh, let's cut over to Cassius. Um, what uh, what is it that you're up to at this point? So um, after taking a quick stroll around town, I try to find the uh, dingiest, most Lord Stanley-esque bar, <laughs> and uh, sit there, grab a seat, try to look around. After ordering a couple of drinks, um, try yeah, trying to see if there's anything more exotic uh, in which to try. Um, obviously, DM over yeah, overriding aloud, uh, trying to find fermented fruit or anything that would have a mildly psychedelic experience. Okay, sure. Um, as you're. Uh... You know, talking with people uh, in this tavern, uh, looking looking for these uh, these substances, uh, you hear the uh, the bell above the door ring, and uh, you see you see a small person, uh, not not small in in height, but in uh, physique, uh, being pushed in in a. You haven't seen too many of these. Uh, most of the people who might need to use these probably perish pretty soon afterwards. But uh, it's it's a chair that um, has been enabled to roll. And pushing this rolling chair uh, is a uh, a very large, ruddy-looking human wearing plate uh, plate armor. Um, you recognize the human um, fairly quickly from your meetings at the the Council of Waterdeep. It's uh, it's Anthar Froom. And as this realization dawns on you and you're looking at this, this person in the wheelchair, you realize that the person in the wheelchair is, is a half-elf, uh, dark hair. Uh, one of his arms uh, is missing, uh, and his body looks as though he's been, uh, I guess, sort of ravaged by time. But as you ruminate on this a little bit more, you realize that it's Leus and Erlenthar, the half-elf monk of the Harpers. I'm... Not sure if this is from what I just ate, but is that Leeson? As I live and breathe, he uh, he sort of pulls himself up uh, with with some degree of labor from his uh, his tankard that has a a small cylindrical um, sipping device in it. Uh, he can't really hold a tankard uh, in his one withered arm, uh, but he looks up at you and uh, and you see. You see a spark of life come to his eyes, and he says, As I barely live and breathe, is that Dr. Cassius Hole? Oh, <laughs> from where I went, uh, the doctorate <laughs> kind of didn't follow me. <laughs> Cassius is just fine. Um, forgive me, but uh, I'm celebrating my undeath, so if I sit there and look like I'm staring off into the abyss, it's because staring off into the abyss ah oh, well um, we all must uh, from time to time stare into the abyss and face whatever the void brings uh, Anthar please uh, pu pull up a chair for our friend no one should stare into the abyss alone <clears throat> please uh, Kasha sit oh my gosh how how have you guys been I'm sorry but I, I was a lot of was wearing out on me before you know <laughs> the big day <laughs> all right Cease to breathe, so <laughs> I might be a little bit more talkative now. <laughs> uh, well, um, as I'm sure you know, uh, your uh, successors, uh, they were successful in, in stopping uh, the rise of Tiamat, as it were. Um, we, it, It's been a long year. Uh, I've very recently been able to uh, get out of bed and leave. Uh, it, it's, it's been a hard year for the Sword Coast, and it's, it's been very hard for me as well. Um, Using uh, using the powers that I've learned uh, of my abilities to, to sort of interact and speak through animals, uh, I may have overextended myself a bit, but uh, the, the situation was quite dire. Uh, I can only say that I'm... It was worth it uh, to, to have this opportunity to, a year later, still roll into a tavern 
and order a tankard. Because uh, if we were unsuccessful, well, I feel like ale would be the furthest thing from our minds. Yes, yes. Um, no, we we couldn't have gotten anywhere close to what we were able to do without you. Uh, it's always kind of bittersweet when we get to have these moments, knowing full well there's a, plenty more who should have been at the table with us. If you don't mind, let's buy a round for them. Indeed. And he just, like, instead of being able to pour it out, he just knocks his tankard over so it spills out on the floor. <laughs> Anthar, you see you see Anthar turn his tankard over, you know, pour some out for his homies. Um, they order another round. Uh, they or- order a round for the uh, the entire tavern. Um, Leosin, uh after, uh, after a, a pretty long moment of silence, uh, once the new round is, has come, you know, you're sort of caught up in your own things and Leosin looks up at you and regards you for a little bit, and he says to you, um, I want you to know that even though you personally were not successful in stopping the rise of Tiamat, um, the work that you did to retrieve us Verum the White, the white, the worm speaker, it was, it was really what turned the tide. Without the intel provided by Verum, we probably would have not known how far along the cult was in their plans, or even where they were going. And even though it was a different group that was successful in stopping Tiamat, uh, your group were entirely instrumental in that success. I hope you don't forget that. That's, um... We'll take a moment to digest that, but I have one favor to ask you before... I rejoin the rest of my party. Um, and it regards my family. Um, would you mind just having someone send a message to them that the the judgment had been passed, justice has been done, and they can sit there and go back to living normal lives. And to um, not expect me. I shall see to it that that message uh, reaches them. Um, now, if you'll excuse me, this has been uh, quite a bit more uh, effort and uh, entertainment than I was really anticipating for the evening, so uh, I'm quite tired. Uh, Anthar, please, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking us back to our rooms. Very fair. Uh, after they leave, I go to the uh, bartender while still, you know, tripping <laughs> and I go into my coin purse grab what I think is 40 gold coins drop it on the bartender and I just go listen to me that man never pays for another drink again if you need more I can be found but you do not bother him with such trifle matters as I head back to my corner he uh you see him uh sort of pull out a, an empty uh coin purse from under the under the under the bar um he scoops the gold coins in them and you see him uh scrawl something on a piece of parchment and tuck it in there and then he puts it back under the bar um so um Leavin, uh what have you come up with um uh, did he said there was a direction he had scouted out towards right um, the shopkeeper he hadn't really done much scouting outside of the city walls because okay. he, he believed that if that was where they were heading that uh, he was probably too too likely to get caught um so did he did he also say how he followed people or like what led him to follow certain people um the only thing that he knows is that the people who are involved in this um extortion ring um they all appear to be drow okay so i say we go and do some um questionable profiling of people (laughs) and find some drow and like kind of follow them at a distance like the 
just do some good old stakeout and stalking. Sure. Uh, so you want to you want to um, do this under cover of darkness, or are you wanting to? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. At night. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So you uh, you've been formulating this plan. Uh, you hear uh, Cassius um, sort of stumble down the hall. Um, mm-hmm. Multiple times. <laughs> uh, so, so you're aware at least that uh, you've got everyone here. Um, so you guys, uh, you know, you go out into the city. Um, go ahead. Um, let's have let's have everybody who wants to participate in this sort of uh, stakeout roll a um, roll a perception check. Cassius, please do yours with disadvantage. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Uh, 18 for me. Okay. Um, all these skills are alphabetical. <laughs> well, hopefully I'm getting, I'm getting the bad rolls out of the way first. I only have a four. Okay. Uh, adjusted 20, 11 plus nine. Adjusted you said 20. perception, right? Yes. I will say that I don't agree with doing drow in there time of their when they're really active i'd rather have them i'd rather look for them during the day when there's sloppier. I, I have dark vision <laughs> <laughs> not you seeing them it's uh, yeah wait are we talking about drow or drugs <laughs> <laughs> we're just observing right now I said 14 albus yes okay all right um Leavin, you do spot um you spot a a drow who who is walking through town uh, alone and appears to be moving in a manner and it was hard for you to pick up on at first but you've been watching him for some time now from you know one of the uh, higher uh, elevations in the city and he looks to be the reason why it was so hard for you to figure out what he was doing before is because he seems to be intentionally uh, interrupting his movement uh, to appear as though he's not actually headed in a particular direction or is not up to something um, Hagrid, you see someone moving through the city as well. <laughs> you see someone large and also, uh, sort of sneaking around like, um, as you get closer to this person and they get closer to you, you see that it's a half orc. <laughs> and so as you're following this person, you sort of, they, they, go into an alleyway and so you fo- follow behind and uh it, it appears as though crispin has stepped away but um you you recognize this person as crispin an old friend of yours from before you died <laughs> i'm here on mic so oh okay okay yeah so crispin uh you're you're traversing through silvery moon uh looking for signs of whatever um you know trying not to uh you know enough about Silvery Moon to know that uh, while half orcs and drows are welcome, you're also regarded suspiciously in case you do, in fact, play to type. Um, <laughs> uh, because while people are is, drow and, and half orc are allowed in the city, if they are caught and convicted of playing to type, uh, they're convicted much more harshly than uh, you know humans, dwarves, and elves who are per- committing similar crimes. Um, Sucker. but, uh, so you, you, you realize that someone is following you. So you duck away into an alley and you turn into this alley and you look to see if this person is following you and you see another very large figure come around the corner. Um, and you recognize the, uh, the moonlight shining off of his head. Uh, it's Hagrid, the paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, if, if Levin hasn't picked up on him already, I, I tap him on the arm I look over at Crispin and just give him a sup. <laughs> you guys. If, wait, this, wait, this hey. guy? If um, I'm, yeah, if wait. I'm still tripping right now, can I just sit there and say, did I just take a drug that makes <laughs> all my friends come back to me? Make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> at disadvantage? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, that is a 17, 8 plus 9. Um, you're not, it's probably not the drugs, but there's, 
there's a strange connection between uh, taking these drugs and people that you knew from before uh, just suddenly popping up. <laughs> oh my god, we reversed the death curse. <laughs> now, this might seem like a weird question, but did you guys come from hell per chance? Rude. Yes. <laughs> Uh, as you look at Leavin Crispin, it's almost hard to recognize him at first because he has this uh, sort of like large scarf wrapped up to his eyes, crafted out of uh, green dragon green flesh. Dragon. <laughs> oh, nice. I saw your handiwork. Turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I was supposed to find you guys actually. Oh, I'm glad I took the drugs then. <laughs> Me too. That's how I ended up in hell, actually. <laughs> oh, actually, and I go to my pocket, I find some fermented fruit. Um, this may go bad, so you probably should do this now before later. <laughs> and I will take it, and I will say, you know, you're a lot better than the, 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 than the rest of the guys of the group. <laughs> I'll take I it. I wish we had you around when I, was, when I was here the first time. I'm just like, Cassius, we were trying to accomplish something right now. Yes. Oh. Oh, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Spe speaking of which, um, Leovin and Albus, um, uh, and Cassius, you got a 14, right, with your roll on disadvantage? Uh, no, I got a 20 with my roll on disadvantage. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so um, Leovin, Cassius, Albus, I want you guys to make a survival check for me to try to track this drow through the city. Oh, yeah, um, good roll. Uh, 29. Okay. I'm guessing it's still at disadvantage. Yes. Oh my god. Where was this when I was playing in the live game? Um, um, 16 plus 3, 18. <laughs> and uh, before we start moving to follow him, I'd like to cast Pass Without a Trace. Okay. So what are we doing, guys? Is this like hell business, or what's going oh, on? Oh, right. You don't know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah, I was actually about to ask this, too. <laughs> This is why I told you not to do the drugs. Um, anyway, um, uh, there's some drow that are um, sort of running a criminal organization around here, and we want to... We want to be French with them. Got it. We want to buy things from them. Got it. <laughs> Opposite of both of those things. <laughs> Look, what's the point of being alive again if we can't sit there and enjoy the city? Look, I've already died of overdose. You can't die from the same way twice, so I can do all the drugs I want. <laughs> that medically is the opposite to the true, but I don't want to sit here and tell that. <laughs> all right. Um, so why don't we... All right. Um, so with Pass Without a Trace on, you guys are moving through the city pretty well. Um, you're, you're following this person from a, a good distance. Uh, Leavin, you're doing a great job at... Uh, tracking footprints that barely exist in dust that also barely exists um <laughs> but you guys eventually follow him to the uh uh one of the city gates um and this person seems to head out around the wall uh into the woods uh near the city uh would you oh like God. to keep following yes okay um, Raven, um, I'm just going to hold on to your dragon scar because when you start <laughs> casting magic, I can literally see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to follow you instead of the magic. Whatever you got to tell yourself, Gash. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be better, hopefully. <laughs> well, since my survival check was a whopping... Uh, not a survivalist. That's what I got you guys for. I'm going to cast Mage Armor because now we're inside. All right. Oh my God, your body's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> These are great drugs, Castle. Look, look, man, they're so great. I'm just gonna let that one slide. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so let's have everybody now go ahead and uh, roll a stealth check. Uh, Leavin, or not Leavin, uh, Cassius and Crispin, your guys' is with disadvantage. What's my skill? You get a plus 10. I get a plus 15. So. Oh, oh, oh. There we go, oh, regressing to a mean. 
Twenty-five. 25. Stealth is twenty-eight with the plus ten. Okay. Uh, twenty with the plus ten. All right. Hagrid, what was yours? Twenty-nine with the plus ten. Okay. Uh, Elvis, it seems that you learned something from trying to sort of stealth through the woods with Thokjima back in the Reaching Wood, and you have <laughs> remembered to pull your robe of the what you have a robe of the stars, right? You've remembered to kind of hike it up a little bit so that way uh, it doesn't catch on the small twigs and brush that's on the ground, uh, oh, because right. your boots definitely do a much better job of getting through that than your robe did. How much does he look like Mickey Mouse in the Fantasia movie right now? <laughs> As much or as little as he wants. <laughs> Will you remember in the morning if I zap him one? Uh, you're not sure. You spent most of your time studying magic, less time studying drugs and cyclosporins. Well, this could be a good experiment. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so as you guys continue uh, to move quite soundlessly uh, through this uh, this wood, um, you keep following the tracks, Laven, with your uh, your prior survival check. You're having no problems whatsoever following this guy. Uh, it's almost like, uh, I mean, y you can tell that he knows what he's doing, but you know what you're doing way better. <laughs> <laughs> this guy uh, doesn't even know how to walk towards this thing. <laughs> So as you guys continue uh, following these tracks, it kind of curves around the walls of the city because the city is uh, circularly walled. Um, and uh, after like an hour of going through, uh, you guys come across what looks like an ancient ruin that is uh, basically attached to the city wall. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to switch the page that you guys are on once I can find... Oh yeah, I'm going to move this to make this easier for myself. You know, when I was in Bristol, that wasn't ancient. Why are we always finding ancient ruins? <laughs> I mean, I mean ru what ruins are not ancient. Have you seen modern ruins? They're very, very bland. And, uh, Crispin, sorry, I need to bring your token and, over here. And depressing. Yeah, like when we look at the old ones, we just see it's like, oh, how quaint. And you see they, the new ones, and you're like, you know something went wrong. Yeah, this restaurant clearly did not have the right seed money. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> I mean, who's going to eat ice cream 24 hours a day? <laughs> so you guys come across uh, what looks to have been at one point some sort of... Um, it's hard really to tell what kind of building it was. There's some columns and what appears to be uh, a dome uh, that is on the ground like you you would think that it might have been something that was at once uh, a shrine of some sort but it would seem strange that the rest of the columns would be standing so straight up and this dome just being on the ground so you're not positive exactly what sort of uh, construction this was meant for uh, Albus you haven't read anything about this it doesn't you're, you're not sure if this is related to any of the uh, extensive amount of arcane research that gets done here in Silvery Moon um, but as far as you can tell, you don't see anybody around. It's a UFO. <laughs> uh, question for the DM. That? Answer for Cassius, potentially. Given the fact that I just invented this drug in the game, and given it the detect magic capabilities, is anything in this shrine <laughs> glowing? Um, You're getting uh, sort of like some faint wisps of things sort of all over the place. Um, it's... Obviously, uh, you can see this this pass without a trace magic. Uh, Albus is is quite shiny, um, but otherwise, you get like what almost seems to be like magic, like small like wisps of smoke and fireflies and things like that all over the place. So you're not really getting a good read here. That's okay. I didn't ask if I got a good read. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. If I pop into the astral plane, uh huh, would I be able to see anything different? Uh, if there was something else here in the astral plane, potentially. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, maybe what we're not seeing, it's not, you know, something. Like, an illusion to... might be different. Mm. You might have to pop over there to see. Actually, I wouldn't mind going with you. That seems like it'd be quite an experience. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could take you. I might be is, able to. Is the drow here somewhere? Uh, if you would like, you could uh, make a another perception check and kind of look around a little bit. 
it's a 16. 16, okay. Um, give me just a sec. Like, like, did the trail stop, or does it seem like it leads further? Uh, guess, the trail did end here. here. Okay. Oh, okay. Cassius, uh, you, if you climb on my back, I think I could pop us both in. All right. Um, just given the size and s likely strengths of what's going on, what if I just put my hand on your shoulder? Well, we could try it, but only your hand might go with me. <laughs> That'll be an experience, too. It's not the first time I've lost this one. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use the Robe of the Stars and pop into the astral plane. Okay. Um, I, I need to figure out really quick what that means. As far well, as... <laughs> what it says here... Oh, you mean in terms of... You said of we... astral plane and not ethereal plane, correct? Yeah, this is the astral plane. But I was thinking more like you know uh, when uh, Frodo puts the ring on. Right. So that. So I will. Bef so before you use this, I will allow you. Uh, so what you're thinking of is the ethereal plane. Mm. Um, something similar to um, the oil of etherealness would allow you access to this ethereal plane, which is sort of adjunct to the primaterial plane, much like Frodo in the in the. Uh, with with the, the uh, ring of power on. But, so then we're not anything. Right. Well, let's see if we take his hand with him with me. Let me see really quick. Oops. Let's go back. I'm certainly not going to get inside the robe. I didn't say in the robe. I said yeah, but like... that's that's like that's too socially uncomfortable. Just <laughs> hand on the robe. See what happens. You're on drugs. What do you care? <laughs> Look, it's 100% bodily autonomy. You didn't say, hey, come inside the robe, so I wasn't going to. I don't want you to come in my room at all. Sure. If you haven't noticed, Cassius is kind of in a Burning Man moment right now. <laughs> uh, let me really quick, I just have to one more time read uh, what that said on the robe to confirm what I'm thinking. Um, and I, I'm just trying to plot how I'm going to keep Cassius and Crispin away from each other a little bit because they seem to be a terrible influence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, so so Albus, you transport. Um, uh, and this is different than the project astral uh, spell uh, where you actually are projecting your consciousness into the astral plane. This is you going We're to the astral going. plane. Yeah. Along with Cassius's hand. <laughs> um, oh man, that's trippy. So you you get there and you, you know you see uh, you know this isn't your first time uh, since uh, coming into possession of the uh, robe of the uh, robe of the stars to go to the astral plane, um, but you don't see anything there that appears to help you with what you're trying to do now. Um, it's. Uh, you, you realize once you get there, like, oh shit, I meant ethereal. Damn it. <laughs> Where is Cassius's hand? Did they slip something to me? <laughs> no, no, this is this is pretty wild stuff. It's a it's a real Back to the Future moment. <laughs> <laughs> look, did Cassius look, move? No, I stood. Uh, this yeah, I just stood the entire time. Cause. I, I don't understand this robe that much because it says teleport, but really it brings me right back to the exact same spot I was. Right. Do I get to move around in the astral plane at all? Um, Is that how it works, or am I just like this little weird pocket dimension where I'm just there just to wait out the trouble or the storm and then pop back? It appears as though you can um, do... Th you, you could stay on the astral plane and move around. It's just whenever you do come back, it's to the exact spot you were on the primaterial plane. Okay, so in this astral plane, because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I'm pretty vague on that. Is it just like looking like the material plane type of thing? Or what does the astral plane look like in terms of... Um, so I wanted to go with the MAGA. If you gave me that, it'd be much simpler. We wouldn't be going through this problem right, right. now. So as you enter the astral plane, uh, you see... Um, 
you see disembodied souls traveling all around. Both above and below you is a great silvery sea um, with swirling wisps of white and gray streaking among motes of light like distant stars. So do I, when I see these floating bodies, mm -hmm. do I see silver threads behind them? Um, no, because people who are here, their threads have been cut. Hmm. Man, if my eyes could see what my hand is right now, that would be fucking great. Well, they're probably not very friendly. Probably not. You also, um, you, you know, you understand a little bit about the astral plane in that you know that, um... Uh, there are some humanoids who live there, uh, and they are definitely not um, the kind of people you want to be tracking you down. Do the Gith Yankee live in the astral? Yes. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. So before any astral pirates can uh, accost you, you uh, you use your action to uh, return to the prime material plane. Um, and uh, Cassius, you find your hand back where it was supposed to be. Um, oh, man. and, uh, even though you didn't remember that you were doing it, your arm has gone back to the position where it was, where your hand was resting on Albus's shoulder, and your hand is now back to being attached. Uh, it could have been That's... a real lesson. Why not to do drugs, though? That's <laughs> fucking wild. Look, if I can mention, the worst thing that could happen to me is I end up dead. That's an experience I've already felt. Right. Um... So why don't I, just for a moment, experience what it's like to be alive in a different way. <laughs> What am I... Oh, that's what I'm looking for here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, as you guys are uh, standing, uh, kind of looking around, uh, Leavin, you actually didn't find anything with your perception check. Um, okay. But stepping out from behind uh, one of these pillars is the drow that you were following. And as he steps out, he goes, um, Well, I can see you've followed me quite a distance. Uh, I think at this point it's probably most beneficial for you to state your business. Um, yeah, my name is Cassius, and I was hoping you could tell me what I'm doing here. I was hoping you'd tell me what you were doing here, but, um, maybe someone else could try talking. Um, I, I want to try to act like Cassius and Crispin as best I can, like, try to mimic how they're acting. I, what, are, what are, who are you? What are we doing here? I find it very hard to believe that the three of you are on a spirit quest and just happen to mind, uh, come across these ancient ruins. Spirit quest. Laven, yes. go ahead and make a deception check for me. <laughs> uh, where is deception? Ooh, plus zero. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help him since I'm, he's actually, like, we're actually high to try to sell the line? Um... No, because okay. you don't even understand that there's something to be helped with. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> At this point, you've lost track of how much of that you bought and how much you've distributed. <laughs> it's it's yeah, safe it's... to assume that everyone and no one, all at the same time, Schrodinger's drugs, are just floating around here. <laughs> this is why you always try half first. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the drow goes, um, oh, when... Oh, he, he doesn't believe that, that you're actually here on a spirit quest. Um, so, um, it says, um, you three idiots aside, um, big man over there, um, what is it that, uh, that you're doing here? I'm, I'm certain yes, that, I'm uh, big man. <laughs> um, we're doing drugs, <laughs> like you should. <laughs> the adult, shh, the adults shh, are talking. We don't, <laughs> we don't know their laws and he doesn't know I'm a doctor. <laughs> Uh, I guess <clears throat> I'm wondering why you're asking the questions. Uh, I suggest you tell us what you are doing that is causing us to wonder. So, as you say that, you guys see um, coming out from uh, from behind. Uh, trees and, and things like in other columns uh, a couple people come up out of the um, the actual dome itself uh, from uh, some hatches that you didn't really see were there before uh, he goes well 
I believe we have you outnumbered, so I'll continue asking the questions. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Where did you guys get so good at hiding? Oh, that's really neat. Um, I'm <laughs> going to try to subtly cast Lesser Restoration on Cassius. Okay. Um, See if I can go ahead make him roll. not high. Make a sleight of hand check. <laughs> okay. Yes, let's cast spells around angry people. This will work uh, out for us. <laughs> that's a 20. Wow, totally. okay, yeah, he has no idea that you did that. Um, so, yeah, you've cast Lesser Restoration on Cassius. Cassius, you feel, you still feel sort of like that weird, like, slow motion effect that your hand was doing before. Um, <laughs> but you you are sensing also some, some clarity and focus in this. Um, you're, you're no longer at disadvantage on uh, checks. <laughs> at this point, uh, I'm going to roll insight to see if I noticed him do it as a last disadvantage check. Okay. Uh, that is a 21 on my insight. Did I beat a sleight of hand? Ye yes, I believe your sleight of hand was a 20, right, Laban? Yes. Yeah. I just turned to him and I was like, we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> Harshing my buzz, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, while well, all this is going on, I uh, decided this is enough talk. I pull my hammer and I start advancing on the nearest creature. Oh, all right. Uh, well, that happens. It is time to smite it. <laughs> you don't, don't want to. You don't want to mess with that big dude. Now tell us what you're doing here. Uh, as he does that, I'll take the uh, 17 hit points of damage and start right of the flame on okay. my uh, wit's end. All right. Uh, anyone else have any actions they would like to do before beginning combat? Since you're not really in a surprise, but you guys can see that things are happening. Albus, you've already cast your mage armor, and that's still active, so that's good to go. Um, uh, any uh, actions that you want to do that aren't do, attacking, uh, because we will be rolling initiative for that very soon. Do I know anything about Drow and their feelings about certain damage types? Uh, you have not encountered any Drow in your adventures, so no. I, d I didn't think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they don't like it when you cut them, or stab them, or bludgeon them. Or say mean words to them. Just focus on the task at hand. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody, let's let's roll initiative. Can I before the battle starts? Can I ice myself? Yes. <laughs> um, the investiture of ice. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Anybody get 20 to 25? 21. 23. Okay. Because everybody knows that post-acid trip grogginess does not exist in this game. <laughs> All right. Um, Cassius, you had a 21? Yep. Okay. Um... Let me see really quick what this bonus is. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, 15 to 20. 16. Okay. Uh, 10 to 15. Oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> 14. 14, okay. And I'm doing this battle in protest by you. you you've been kind of kicking and screaming this whole time. Um, Alright, uh, who don't I have yet? Leaving. Um, Crispin, where'd you get? 12. 12, okay. Uh, Crispin, what is your... Um, Initiative bonus. Plus five. Plus five, okay. So you will be going after Elvis. Because you tied with an enemy. Um, Thakajima is going to go last. Okay, uh, so up at the top, we have Leavin. All right. So I'm all iced up, and I'm going to run out uh, 5, 10, 15, 20... 25, 30. 
Okay. Um, and then I'm going to um, stick my hand out and um, I guess blast this like cold wind in a cone. Okay. Um, f- it's a 15 foot cone. Okay. So at, try to at, I'm trying to catch both of those two if they fit. So because of the column, you will not be where you are able to hit this guy on the right with the cone. Okay. But you can't hit How this guy. How much did I move? Did you I... moved 25, I think. Can I go there? Yes. But then I'm not going to get... That's going to be not wide enough, right? Yeah, no, you can. Okay, then that. Okay, all right. Uh, so what do they need to do then? Uh, constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throws, Okay. Uh, all right, the guy on your right uh, rolled a 24. Uh, the guy oh, on nice. your south <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, rolled a 16. That'll fail. Okay. Um, 14 plus. Uh, so 16 cold damage to the one that failed, okay. and half to or half to the one that passed. Okay. And uh, that radius around me is uh, difficult terrain. Okay, got it. All right. Uh, did the the rest of your group catch that? The uh, can you guys see the radius around Leavin? I should probably make sure that you can, no. uh, because that will be regarded as difficult terrain, which isn't a huge deal, but it might wind up making a difference. Uh, Leavin, anything else that you want to do? Um, we are doing. You are at second level. Yes, that's a bonus action. Yep. Okay. I feel like these guys will enjoy poison. Probably, maybe. Let's see. Poison spray the, the this guy that we followed. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so you need to make another Constitution save. Constitution. Yeah. All right. That is a sixteen. Fail. <laughs> and where is the crate? Dice. Uh, I rolled a 12. That's 12 poison damage. All right. He chokes to death on the poison. Yes, somebody's allergic to poison. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cassius, that brings us to you. All right. All right. Um, like, let's see here. I'm going to end up going uh, 5, 10, 15. Okay. And I'm going to sit there, and with the right of the flame, I'm going to st- make a slash with wit's end. Okay. Right at the guy. Um, that will be an 18 to hit. That will hit. And that will end up being uh, 7 slashing damage and 8 fire damage. Okay. Uh, how's he looking? He looks like shit. All right. Um, I'm going to make a... Uh, Another attack with the uh, hilt of Wit's End. Okay. Looking to do non-lethal damage. Got it. Okay. Uh, just enough to knock him out real good. Yeah. And um, I'll be doing that for the rest of the battle. Uh, okay. Trying to trying to leave people sleepy. Sure. Uh, that one will be a 19 to hit. Yep. And since that is not where the right the flame is, that is only 12 slashing damage, no fire damage. Okay. He 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 goes to sleep. Sweet. <laughs> Um, then I will advance the remaining 10 feet that I have and then as a bonus action I'm going to uh, spells here now let's see what happens I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself okay alright my turn. so some of the drow are up now. Um, let's see. But before we continue, Corey, mm-hmm. my question to you is this. The ones with the long hair, are those women? No. It's just all men? Uh, yeah, it appears to be, yes. So these tokens just are... You represent... They don't signify anything with the different pictures. Uh, they are three different types of enemies, but um, uh, as far as uh, gender goes, um, that was just the, the drow picture from the monster manual. Okay, so 
the long hair I assume are just fighters and the other ones are with are mages uh, you're not sure yet well I would know if they're holding weapons or wands or whatever wizards hold weapons uh, the one so this guy in the back uh, you can kind of make out that he's holding a staff but the other anything else that might be different about other people you can't see because of where you are in their uh, sort of cover Ping them. he's the one in the back by the tree oh way back there outside yeah. of the ring mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay so this guy is going to step to Leavin he's going to um, attack you with his short sword Um, one of his attacks misses, and the other one is a natural 20. Um, so you're going to take um, 14 piercing damage. Okay. Um, and then that's it for him. I've had worse nat 20s rolled against me. <laughs> right. This guy... Gonna move there. Uh, he's going to make an attack with his short sword. A uh, pair of attacks against uh, Cassius. Uh, before he does that, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Um, why? Because I casted Sanctuary. Whenever someone oh, is targeting okay. me, they have to make a wisdom saving throw in order to. Uh... Okay. Uh, that's an 18. Uh, that just barely succeeds. Okay. Is that for each attack? Uh, until the spell ends, any creature targets the warded creature with an attack or harm first make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Okay, alright. So yeah, it's going to be for each attack, because they have a multi-attack. Yeah. So, yeah. it rolls a natural one on that attack. Cool. Um, as far as the second attack goes, he's going to roll his wisdom saving throw, and he's going to get a 10, so he fails. Correct. So he can either attack somebody else, or he loses... He's going to lose the attack because there's no one else within range with that particular weapon. Um, this guy is going to. So I'll yeah, just for flavor, as he sits there and um, has the first attack go, I just able to dodge out of it. And the second one is about to hit me. I just put my hand out, and the weapon just immediately stops right in its tracks. All right. Let's see this guy. No, that guy's knocked out. You can't do anything because you're unconscious. That guy's gonna step there. <laughs> DM take inspiration. Barely gonna make it to you, Leavin. Uh, this guy. If... Gonna go there. He's gonna try to work his way around. Um, so, let's see. Uh, single attacks, right? Yep. Alright, so wisdom saving throw. Um, from the one guy who can hit you, still Cassius, uh, that's not going to do it uh, with a, a 9. Uh, so he's yep, done. Do uh, Leavin, the other one, is going to attack you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a adjusted 22 to hit. Yep. Uh, and that's for 5 piercing damage. Okay. Uh, Alright, so that brings us to Hagrid. You're up. Alright. I am going to move within the ring as my bonus action okay i am going to yell out armageddon and activate my thunder hammer uh i will say and, so did you say that you activated your hammer before the battle you said you had pulled it out or had you activated it then no oh okay all right that's fine i was because if you i couldn't remember if you did or not because if you had already done that i wasn't going to require your bonus action to do it now okay and as my main action, I will cast Abjure Enemy okay. on that draw right there. Okay. He is... Is there a saving throw for that, or is it just... There in... is, I believe... Uh, let me check into it here. Yes, Wisdom Saving Throw. And if he's a fiend or undead, he has disadvantage. Okay. Uh, unfortunately not, just a kind of evil human. Um... But that's probably not going to get it done with a uh, 10. So he is abjured. 
He's abjured. All right, so he is frightened, and his speed is reduced to zero. Okay. Or That's... one minute, or until it takes any damage. Okay. All right. Um, sounds like a pretty good use of your time. Uh, that was bonus action and action, so Albus, you're up. Okay, my question is, with mm -hmm. my adept feet, uh -huh. if I cast a fireball somewhere around, say, here, my guy should be safe from the blast, correct? Because of your uh, spell sculpting ability from your class, yes, you can cast fireball in that area and choose not to target um, Cassius. Well, that's what I'm going to do, because he seems to have a lot of friends over here. Okay. Um, let me sort of put that there. I'm going to give you control of it, and I'm also going to give it its aura, which you should be able to see, correct? Yes. Okay, so you go ahead and put that where you want to. Well, it's Sidge Catch's eye eyebrows at least. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. It's, it's attacking my eyebrows. <laughs> All right. Um. So, what is that four? Uh oh! Did I cast the wrong spell. No. Uh, it's one, two, three, four of them. Uh, Cassius and Hagrid, you guys are safe because of um, Albus's spell sculpt ability. God damn it! All right. So I hit the button too many times, and I cast it. I only wanted to say I cast it once. Okay. Uh, just uncheck those um, spell slot boxes. Oh, I can do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right. I so. so um, roll some damage. Guy you fails. Go ahead and roll your damage while I'm rolling saving throws. What is that? Eight six siders. What is your um, spell save DC? Albus? 18. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So that's just barely going to fail. And okay. Yep. They all failed. So they take full damage. Get any damage extra for that or no? Uh, no. Okay, so they take 31. Okay. Alright, uh, I'm going to move that out of the way here now then. Uh, bonus action. Oh, that's right, I get to do one more. Thing. Uh, also, this, uh, this drow here that Cassius, um, knocked out is uh he's not dead but um he's dying so okay let me uh so i get i could do one more thing i can catch one more spell right yes uh crispin you are up next once albus is done I'll cast a uh, Firebolt on this guy. Okay. Go ahead and roll the hit. Yeah. Whoops, wrong die. Jesus. 17. 17 misses. All right. Uh, Crispin, you're up. All righty. I'm going to bolt my 30 feet up to right here. Do a quick look in both directions, see the big smoldering fireball up here, and decide I want to use my bonus action to dash and attack that guy. Okay. Going at him with the rapier. All right. Now I got advantage, right? Um, 
You don't have advantage, but it is a sneak attack. Okay. I'll take that. Although you do have um, disadvantage because of the drugs. This. Okay. That makes it uh, 18 to hit. Adjusted 18. Still hits. You hit all, all three right. of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, base damage is adjusted to eight, and sneak attack is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. So eight plus 16, 24 total damage. Okay, uh, you stab your rapier into him, and a flood of technicolor fluid pours out of him as he falls off of your rapier to the ground. And I'm going to use a free action to pat my sword and say, I love you, buddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I that... look at that and I just go, that could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. That brings us to these guys. So this guy is going to step there. Um, and he's going to put right here I'm using the fire bolt or a fireball but um, so let's see Albus no not yeah. Albus sorry Cassius Hagrid yes. Crispin Leavin. Uh I need you guys all to make actually not Leavin, Um so Cassius Crispin and Hagrid you guys need to make constitution saving throws all right. Uh, is this an area effect spell or an attack? This is an area of effect spell. All right. So sanctuary doesn't matter. And Seventeen for Crispin. Okay. You said con save. Yes. And I am within Hagrid's aura. Um. Yes. Just barely. <clears throat> so that's plus four to that. Um. That will be. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Um, Hagrid, can you make a constitution saving throw for me? I will, um, and I have, and even with advantage because of my uh, mantle of warding, uh, I need to use my inspiration to re-roll. Okay. Oh, good fucking god. Um, Thirteen only. 13. Okay, so Haggard, you just barely missed the spell save DC, so you take the full 18 poison damage, but um, Cassius and Crispin, you guys take 9 poison damage. Neat. Um, these guys are going to take 9. 9 okay. damage. Okay. Actually, wait. How long does that last for? I think it's a... Whoops. Didn't mean to click that, but okay. Okay, so so that that cloud is still there. Uh, he cast cloud kill. Um all right. This guy is going to 5 10 15 20 25 30. He's going to teleport to there uh, and he's going to cast lightning bolt um, through um, Cassius and Hagrid um, so I need you guys to make dexterity saving throws damn he instantly knows how to get through my sanctuary well he just wants to hit as many of you as he can yeah. so this will start off as plus eight then and I'm going to use a lucky point to re-roll that. Much better. Uh, so that's 19 plus 8, 27. Okay. Hagrid, how about you? And mark off a lucky point. Hagrid, you appear to be muted. By the way, this video kind of looks like Max Hedrum right now. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Um, uh, I had a 22 okay. as my saving throw. 
but I also want to use my uh, mirror shield to reflect the spell back at the caster. Fan fucking tastic! I love it. Okay. Um, Does that mean I have to make another save as it goes through me again? <laughs> uh, <Yes>. n- no. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, so, um, Hagrid, can you read for me the effect of that shield again? I I want to remember know if I have this completely correct. Definitely. Give me a half a second. The shield grants the user advantage on deck saving throws as a result of a spell. Once per long rest on a success, the shield reflects the spell back at the caster. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, so you actually take no damage from the attack, Hagrid. Um, Cassius, you take um, 16 lightning damage. Holy fuck. And this guy who cast the spell takes 32 lightning damage. <laughs> <laughs> Does now Hagrid's shield need to take a nap? Uh, he will need to repolish oh, need to it. Polish it morning. During a long rest, yep. Repolish <laughs> <laughs> that shield. Polish it. Yeah. Bud. All right. What's that thing, is it? Look. Um, what, you've never polished your shield before? One last thing. Uh, this uh, mage back here, uh, he's going to cast um, Magic Missile at the second level at... Um, Leavin. Um so uh, that's going to be four one d fours plus one towards you, Leavin, and those automatically hit. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa! Easy now, everybody. Isn't that just like two bolts? Uh, so when you cast it at first level, it's three darts, and when you cast it at a higher level, it adds an extra dart. All right, so that's going to be uh, 17 force damage to you, Leavin. Ooh. Uh, and then Thokjima is going to be up. He's going to... He's seeing people drop. Don't um, tell me what to do. No way. I did not expect that you were going to be here. All right, uh, are you, you're not on roll 20 yet? You just rolled in. Okay. I'm sitting here waiting. I was going to say, I see him in the Okay. All right. I actually, I did not notice. Uh, so, Mike, welcome. Uh, thanks for coming in. It is your turn. Uh, you guys are fighting some drow uh, that okay. have been extorting uh, merchants in the city. And Leavin has uh, been beseeched to help. And uh, Leavin has motivation to help. <laughs> so, from what I've gathered, we have a sanctuary up. Killed most of them. Yes, uh, this one here um, was knocked unconscious by uh, Cassius intentionally, but has failed two death saving throws uh, pe- uh, after a fireball was exploded. Well, I have a question for you. Two. Are we the bad guys? Not always good guys. <laughs> uh, close enough. Trow are like nocturnal and stuff. They're obviously bad. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're the bad guys. I'm going to go up there. Okay. I use my bonus action to hide. Okay. Go ahead and um, roll a stealth check. That is a 1 for a total of 18. Okay. Uh, That being said, I would like to use my attacks because he should be within range of a sharpshooter to go after this mage fucker back here. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll um, roll your first attack with advantage, and you will have sneak attack. Okay, does he ha- has he been damaged yet? Uh, no. No, he has not. Okay. Then, first one with the advantages uh, is 29. That will hit. Okay, so I need doth a d8, a d6, and he hasn't been damaged yet, correct? Correct. So just those two then. 14. Okay. And second attack, I will no longer be hidden, but I'd like to throw Colossus Slayer on there, because why not? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Still with sharpshooter. Um, I didn't use sharpshooter last time. I just mentioned it because it doesn't give me a disadvantage on ranges mm. or cover. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, 
If you... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll throw a sharpshooter on there. Why not? Okay. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, uh, natural 20. That naturally hits. Okay. So I need a D8 plus another D8, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And... I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm missing. I don't think so. Okay. So that is... 17 plus sharpshooter gives me... I don't remember right now. Because I have so much shit. I think it's uh, plus so 10. 27 damage. 27 yeah, damage, okay. Alright, yeah. looking pretty rough. That concludes what I am capable of. Okay, uh, that brings us back up to the top with Leavin. Uh, let me double check something real quick, Leavin. Um... Mm -hmm. Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't. You don't need to make a save because you're immune to poison. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um, I am gonna make another uh, snow cone. Okay. Um, I want to try to get this guy and this guy. Uh, I don't yeah. think a 15 foot cone will get you far enough there. Let me see. So just barely not. Hmm. Okay. Or well, I'm still gonna I'm still here. gonna do. That. Actually, yeah, it will. Okay. Um. So, what kind of saving? Constitution saving throw. All right. Right. From the guy closest to you, uh, that's gonna be a uh, twenty-one. Uh, from the furthest guy, that's gonna be a fourteen. So pass and then fail. Okay. Uh, nine, eleven. Uh, seventeen cold. Okay. And then half to the one that passed. Oh yeah. Uh, what is? Was half seven eight? <laughs> no, nine. <laughs> it's nine. <laughs> Depends if you're round up or down. Right. 17. Round down oh. is 8. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm struggling here for some reason. But this it's guy good. this guy did fail. He takes all 17 of that. All right. Uh, bonus action. Poison spray to the guy in front of me. Okay. Another con save. Uh, that's going to fail. Cool. Uh, just three poison damage. Okay. Uh, Cassius, you're up. All right. Well, I still have the effects of Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I am going to uh, walk around this pillar here. I'm going to cast Spare the Dying on the guy I'm keep okay. alive. All right. Uh, I also need you to make a Constitution saving throw um, since you started For still. For Cloud Kill? Yes. Um, so that will be 7, 9, 13... Yeah, 13. I'm not going to use a lucky point on that. Okay, uh, so you will take um, you'll take some damage from the cloud kill this time. Okay. Uh, it's going to be 23 poison damage. All right. Um, all right, so you cast Spare the Dying. Um, anything else you would like to do? Uh, I would have invoked attacks of opportunity from that individual by doing so. Mm. Oh, but they still have to make the wisdom saving throw. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Wisdom saving throw fails, so no. No attack of opportunity. Yeah. To which I'll sit there, and like as soon as I dodged it, and like stop the attack, Vader stops. So there's like, look, I'm trying to help your friend out. Can you at least give me a little... You know what? No, I'm done with this. And then I'm going to sit there and make my multi-attack. Okay, ending. so you're moving, moving back to where you were? Yeah, moving back. Okay. Uh, and yeah, ending Sanctuary by attacking. Okay. Uh, that is a natural 19, so that's a 29. Hits. Uh, that starts off at 14 slashing damage. Um, 
three fire damage. Uh, trying to do non-lethal. If, okay. If I knock it to zero. Sure. Yeah. Still alive. Yep. Let's Round see. two. Uh, that will be a twenty-one to hit. That hits. Uh, that will be eleven slashing damage. Once again, three fire damage. Okay. It's looking pretty rough, but he's still standing. All right. Um, and, yeah, then I'll just sit there and say, now be a good little drow and leave me alone. <laughs> okay. Um, so now it's the start of his turn. He's got to make a constitution save. Uh, he fails, so he's going to take damage from the cloud kill. So he takes 21 damage. And that hurt. Uh, and he's going to make a multi-attack at you, um, um, Cassius. And uh, on the first one that hits, I'm going to use uh, Blood Curse of Mutual Suffering. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so the first one is going to hit. Oh, shit. I can't do that. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so only one of them hits. Um, and it's going to be um, 7 piercing no. damage and 10 points. Oh, no. Damage. The one that... Yeah, the one that I wanted to do is uh, Blood Curse of the Eyeless to uh, Force Disadvantage. That's the one I wanted to do. Oh, okay. So that's so what I, you... No, I technically can't do what it says. So I'm just going to take the damage. Okay, all right. So like I said, seven piercing damage and ten poison damage. Okay, seven piercing, ten poison. Cool. This guy... That hurt. It's going to run up to Albus. Albus is going to make two attacks against you. Um, let's see. Uh, one of them is a dirty 20, because I think your AC is 19 with Mage Armor, correct? Yeah. Okay, so one of them will hit, so you take uh, 7 piercing damage and 10 poison damage. 7 piercing and 12? 10. 7 and 10, so you'll take 17 total. Um, okay, uh, so that ends those guys... Right? Yeah, because that guy, the guy that you have abjured, Hagrid, he cannot do any. He is, he, he's afraid, so he, and his movement speed is zero, right? So he can't move. Can he attack? Uh, actually, once he gets attacked, I think. I'm trying to check in. Oh, yeah, that, once right? he takes damage, it ends, right? It ends, right. Okay, alright, so he is no longer abjured, um, and he's going to make a multi attack against Leavin. Um, so that's going to be. Um, one of them is a 10, so that misses, and the other one is going to be a uh, 23, so that's going to hit. So you'll take uh, seven uh, pierce, uh, yeah, seven piercing damage, Laban. Okay. All right. Uh, the other, so they're done. So this guy, since he's still in the cloud kill, he's going to fail two death saving throws again. Um, but he's the last drow, so that's the end of their turns. Um, Hagrid, I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Seventeen, uh, twenty-six. Okay. No. So, yeah, twenty-six. All right. You take ten poison damage, uh, being inside the cloud kill. All right. Uh, but you are free to move about the country. All right. I will advance to that draw there. Okay. And using my. Hammer, attempt to melee. Okay. Oh, good lord. Uh, does a 13 hit? Uh, 13 does not. Mm -hmm. Didn't think so. Extra attack is a 19. Uh, a 19 um, A nineteen would hit, but the draw was actually going to use his reaction to parry, uh, which causes it to miss. All right. Then I would like to use I find it here. I don't remember what it's Well maybe I don't have that as as a paladin. What are you looking to do? The second extra attack. 
Oh, that's a fighter thing. Fighters get uh, more than one extra attack at higher levels. That's yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. All right. So that will end my turn. Okay. Uh, you don't want to cast a spell or anything with a bonus action. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You know what? If I could use the ring. Yeah, you just roll. For a bonus action. Yeah, you can. You just roll with disadvantage. Out. Critical fail. Woof. All right. Um, I'm sorry that that didn't go better for you. <laughs> uh, that brings us to Albus. Albus, you're up. So, this guy in front of me. Uh huh. Did he kick spells, or what did he use to hit me? He hit you with a short sword. And oh. it was not just the short sword that hurt. There seemed to be some sort of lingering effect that uh, hurt you after that, like uh, a poison of sorts. I'm going to cast Blight. Okay. And I'm just going to cast it at the fourth level. Okay. So you need to save at 18. Okay. What uh, what kind of saving throw is it? It is... What's his worst one? Uh, it doesn't really matter. He, f he rolls really bad, so he's going to fail. His constitution. Bonus action. Shocking grass. Okay, roll the hit. <laughs> you fucker. It went out of 20 and then rolled to a 2. <laughs> All right. 12. Uh, 12 is going to miss. Uh, Crispin, you're going to be up next, but I have to run to the bathroom really quick. I can't believe that. It was real, it, right on a 20, and then it flipped over one side to a 2. Is everybody gone? Nope, I'm here. Are we taking a quick break, or...? No, Corey just has to empty his bladder again. I'm thinking of filling my bladder up. Man, it's dark out here. It's actually not too bad. Yeah. Uh, while we have this break, let's tell everybody about the dangers of type 2 diabetes. Um, symptoms of which are rapid weight loss, uh, as well as frequent urination. Hmm. Are you trying to say something, Jay? Well, no, I'm just trying to Apparently, I'll know I'm when the DM gets back when I just sit there and say this. How, how does one define frequent? Um, based off of cases in the real world, if you end up having to go to the bathroom every minutes though you haven't had any liquids every how many minutes every 90 minutes even though you haven't drank anything that day hmm but if you're drinking a lot of water well let's just let's treat your body and its GI tract like a hose if you throw a lot of water in one end do you think it's going to come out the other yes yeah. Yeah, depends you've got a pocket and that's something completely different well let's put alcohol in that. Do you think sometimes that water will come back out the hole it came from? <laughs> I mean, normally, yes. Yeah. It depends on how much alcohol you drink and if you can handle it or not. Well, let me just tell you, uh, dessert wine is not an alcohol I ever wanted. <laughs> it's dessert? Like drinking a, yeah, it was like drinking a pixie stick. It was awful. <laughs> I 
They just sat there. It's like, like now, granted, I I was a handful of white claws deep. And yeah, uh, what is... yeah, a white claw is a alcoholic uh, seltzer water. So is that like Zima then? Yes, but for some reason, much more beloved than Zima. Is that what Zima was? I thought Zima was clear beer. It was, no, but... it's a malt beverage, but it was yeah. fruity. It was actually quite popular with women and sissies. Yeah, well, White Claw is very popular with frat boys, apparently. <laughs> All right, uh, very sorry about that, guys. Uh, Crispin, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm going to just come running screaming at this guy with the uh, dagger of venom. Okay. Uh, I do need you to make a constitution saving throw also. Okay. Um, it wasn't that far of a run. Uh, oh, kills. Nine plus fourteen. Uh, oh, okay, uh, so you just barely save, so you'll take thirteen poison damage. Oh, lovely. Okay, uh, and then go ahead and attack. All right, we're swinging in with the the dagger of venom. Okay, that is a fourteen plus eleven, twenty-five to hit. Uh, that will hit. All right. Base damage is adjusted 10. Okay. And then I'm going to activate the de the uh, venom on him. Mm, nice. Okay. And that is another 10. Okay. And does activating the dagger count as the bonus action? Uh, I think so. Okay. Corey, is this guy still... Yes, still alive. And he's not affected by your cloud kill? Yes, he is. Oh, he is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Get it. Um, let's see. What's the other aura? Uh, so Hagrid has an aura and Laven has an aura. Mm -hmm. So what's the cloud kill aura? Which one is that? The fireball. I don't, I don't see the aura. Yeah, it's not visible to us. The, uh, the aura around the fireball that I gave you before, Albus, is the cloud kill. Oh, okay. I'm saying I don't see the aura. And then yeah. there's another circle. Right. There's three circles in there. The big one is the fireball. The small oh, bluer okay. one is uh, Leavin's aura. Uh, and then the smaller yellow one is Hagrid's aura. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a bonus action, Crispin. All right, then. I'm done. Okay. Um, that brings us to... The mage guys again. Um, so this guy is going to uh, the one that you're in front of, Crispin. He's going to cast poison spray at you. So go ahead and make another Constitution saving throw. That one is uh, just a twelve. Just a twelve. Okay. Uh, so that will fail. So that's going to be. Uh, seven poison damage. Um, okay. And then uh, he's going to uh, roll a ray of frost at disadvantage against you. Since you're all up in his business. Uh, okay, uh, that's going to be a 22 to hit. Yep. Alright, so that's going to be, yes, 2d8. Uh, it's eight um, cold damage. Okay. And then um, this guy up here, he's going to take damage from the cloud kill. Um, okay. Man, okay. The music in this battle has gotten so much more metal. <laughs> um, all right, and then he's going to... Um, it's going to cast Misty Step to move here. Um, since he was ten feet away and moved away, would I opportunity attack or? Um, that, not because of, because of Misty Step. Uh, no. Okay. Um, and he's going to cast um. Avard's black tentacles on the area around Thakjima. 
Um, so, Thok, make a dexterity saving throw for me. Dexterity saving throw? Yep. Get in the damn box. That is a 16. 16, okay, so that saves. So you take... You take no damage from that. Okay. All right. Um... So, Thok, that brings us to you, so I need you to make another dexterity saving throw, since now you're starting your turn. Okay. Natural 20, so right. 31. Same deal. All right, so I'm going to move out of this shit then. Okay. Uh, is my movement halved or anything? Uh, it is difficult terrain, yes. Okay. Uh, I need to check something if I get inhibited by difficult terrain with being a ranger. Uh, While traveling in chosen terrain, so if it's swamp, forest, mountain, but I'm assuming because it's magical terrain that would not apply. Correct. Yeah. But I have land stride, which means moving through. Oh nope, still magical. <laughs> okay, just confirming. So that's ten. <coughs> that would be fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. And I want to volley these two idiots over. You know that one of those is Albus, right? Nope. <laughs> I stand by my statement. Okay, well then, screw that, because volley is pointless. Uh, I want to shoot at the guy that decided to put tentacles on me okay. after I use a bonus action to hide. Okay, uh, make stealth check. That is going to be a... I can't do math because I'm really tired. 23. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Has he been injured at all? Yes. Okay. Uh, that is going to be, since I'm an idiot and didn't say it beforehand, a 17 to hit. It hits. All right. So let's do... Colossus Slayer, Sneak Attack, and Normal Arrow. That's 18 damage. Okay. And so I shall shoot at him once more. Mm -hmm. Is I keep forgetting to say that beforehand, so that's only uh, 28. Hits. Nine points of damage. Okay. He's barely standing, but he's still standing. <clears throat> and that should include my turn. All right, uh, Leavin, you're up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I am going to cast uh, Warding Wind. For, um, so that's another concentration spell, so it'll... Um, change my aura to wind okay um and then i'm gonna take a couple steps towards that guy um so i'm hoping that disperses it maybe okay um and then i am going to um throw an ice knife at that guy Uh, sorry, which guy? I was uh, reading Cloud Kill to make sure. <laughs> the, the one I was standing next to. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead and roll to hit. Uh, 19 to hit. Uh, that will hit. And that'll be 10 piercing. Okay. Um, and then... Uh... Uh, 13 cold. Okay. If he fails, if he fails the deck saving throw. Okay. Uh, Hagrid, you also need to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. But the, uh, the draw got a 26. He passed. Just barely. <laughs> I got a 23. 23. Passed. 
So is that damage half then, Laven? Uh, da, da, da. Whoops, I lost my page. <laughs> nope. It's just all or nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Cassius, you are up. All right. Um, this time, reversing the order a little bit, is I'm going to attack the person to my north, non-lethally, of course. Okay. Uh, that will be a 19 to hit. Okay, uh, he is going to use his reaction to parry this attack, so it misses. Um, okay, then I'm going to use my reaction to hit him again. Don't you have extra attack? I do, that was all I was saying. Okay. I'm reacting to his reaction. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, this one will be a 19 to hit. Okay, that will uh, hit. That, that will be 8 slashing damage, 5 fire damage. Non-lethal, of course. Okay. Still alive? Yes. All right. And once I regain control of my token, I'm going to come... How much damage you say it was again? Um, eight slashing, five fire. Okay. I'm going to go over there um, and cast Spare the Dine on that guy again. Okay. And then come back. All right. <laughs> um... All right, this guy is up. He's going to make a multi-attack against you, Cassius. Uh, the first one, I'm going to do uh, Blood Curse of the Eyeless. Okay. So that's disadvantage. Disadvantage, got it. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's going to be a 10, so that's going to miss. Second cool. attack is going to be a uh, 25 to hit. Hits. Uh, so that's going to be um, uh, 10 piercing damage. And uh, ten poison damage. All right. <laughs> um, this guy here. Uh, he's going to attack Hagrid. So that's two attacks against Hagrid. Uh, both of those are going to miss. Uh, and then the last guy is going to make an attack against or his attack against Albus. Um, both of those are going to miss. Um. So then that brings us to Hagrid. All right. Um, I guess I'm just going to start off by trying to attack the uh, drow in front of me. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. That will hit. I'm sorry. 22, actually. Yes, that will hit. Alright, and I'd like to use um, Divine Smite Okay. at the fourth level. Okay. So the initial damage from the hammer is my actions here uh, nine bludgeoning? Okay. The arc damage is six radiant, and then the uh, improved divine smite is another two radiant. And then the extra divine smite is 24 radiant damage. Okay. And I will attack again. Alrighty. 23 to hit. That will hit. Let me see how many spell slots I have left here. Should be everything but a fourth level. Uh, I actually have three fourth level spots, so or slots. So I'm going to use uh, the divine smite again at the fourth level. Okay. So for the weapon itself. It is seven bludgeoning. Arc damage is five radiant. 
Brew Divine Smite is seven. Okay. And then for the Divine Smite itself, 20, 34. All right. So as you as you hit this guy uh, again with the uh, the hammer, um, like as you make contact with him, a like a jet of sulfurous smoke just like smashes him into the ground, and just when when the, when it clears after hitting him, uh, you just see he's just like bent and broken on the ground. Um, that brings us to well, uh, bonus action. Oh yeah, yeah. I would like to fire uh, the ring of Kiri Jolith at that trial right there next to Cassius. Okay. Or at least make an attempt at it. <laughs> that is a dirty 20 to hit. That will hit. Four D6 damage. Yeah. Comes to thirteen. Okay. And that will end my turn. All right, uh, Albus, you're up. So the cloud kill spell's gone, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, so far, so much for that. What's this? What's this aura? Uh, those are both ally auras. Do they harm the enemy at all? No. Okay, then I'm going to ca I'm going to cast Big B's hand. Okay. So the effect says, uh, well, I don't have to hit or anything. Depends on what you decide to make it do. So that was what I didn't understand. You create a large shimmering the hands object. Uh, Yeah, I'm just gonna punch him. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll the hit. I believe it's uh, using your spell attack bonus. Yeah. Is that plus ten? Yep. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> How do I miss the guy right in front of me with the big spell? <laughs> fourteen. Uh, fourteen will miss. Yeah. That was a waste of a good spell, wasn't it? Nope, still there. It doesn't go away. Oh, so I have bonus action. I can still do something with that spell then, right? Uh, yep. Yes, you can. So I could try hitting it again? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna hit it. Or not. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess I'm gonna take a pounding this turn. You missed? What'd you roll? I had 15. Okay. Uh, Crispin, you're up. We are going with the uh, the rapier right at this guy, and that is a sixteen plus uh, ten, twenty six. That will hit. Okay, and we're gonna do one d eight plus five with that. That is eight plus five, which is not my strong point. Thirteen. Okay. And then I'm gonna follow up with a uh, a nice little headbutt. All right. And that is a nine to hit. That will miss, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, all right. That guy. Mages are up now. Oh, I get uh, to go again. He's going to. Yeah, he's going to cast. Oop. No. Stop it. Come on now. 
There we go. He's going to cast Avard's Black Tentacles on you. So I need to make a dexterity saving throw. That's me? Yep. Yep, that's a 29. 29, okay. So you're good. Um, and then make a constitution saving throw because he's going to use his bonus action to cast Poison Spray. That is much worse. It's a 7 plus 5, 12. A 12? Okay. Uh, so yep. you will take uh, 18 poison damage. Oh, lovely. Uh, this guy here, he's going to step up. Uh, to there, um, and he's going to cast Lightning Bolt uh, to hit. Uh, whoops. Uh, so I need Cassius and um, Leavin to make Dexterity saving throws as well as this drow here. All right. Right, right. Leavin, did you get a plus four? Uh, because of your aura. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. That's um, a save. 11. Okay, that's a fail. That's a, that's a bad roll. Um, no, that's not going to... All right, so attacks. Uh, that's actually going to kill that guy in front of you. Um, Cassius, you take 13 lightning damage, and Laven, you take 26. Hooray. Um, and then he's going to use a first level spell slot to cast um, Magic Missile at Thok. So that's going to be five, nine, come on, math, twelve. Twelve force damage to you, Thok. Stupid magic missiles. And then it is your turn. Uh, what is my current health? I have no idea. You took no damage prior. Okay. And now it's my turn? Yep. So which jack wagon shot uh, magic missiles at me? The wizard uh, up here that you've been sparring with. Wizard's gonna die now. Um, <laughs> first off... Instead of hiding this round, I want to Hunter's Mark his stupid ass. Okay. So we'll do that. And then I am going to attack him with a sharpshooter. Okay. That is... Whatever 12 plus 13 is. So 25. Mm-hmm. So, D6, D8, and another D8 for Colossus Slayer. Twenty-nine damage. Yeah, he did. Okay. Then I'm gonna change my attention to the idiot over here. Okay. And again, Sharpshooter. That is... Uh, fuck, math is escaping me. <laughs> 24. That'll hit. Alright. That'll just be a D8. 14. Alright. Kill that guy, too. Which means that... Uh, I have open. concluded. Alright. Uh, Leavin, you are up. <laughs> okay. I don't have a good plan. Um, where are the bad guys? Bad guys are... There is one left in front of uh, Elvis. Okay, so I'm going to go... 5, 10, 15, 20, 20... That's the exact opposite of where they're at! <laughs> oh, I can't see. Where, where was I? I was here. Where is he? Here. I'm out here! Oh, he, he's the hand. The hand is for me! He's one of the two fuckwits I tried to shoot earlier. 
Hold on. There, I see a guy here, and uh -huh. I see a, I see a hand, and I see what I think is Albus. That is me. So where's the bad guy? Next to the hand. Talk to the hand. I don't. Yeah, there should him. there should be three tokens out here. There should I be. I don't see him. There's. See me thinking? Well, I guess five, ten, twenty, twenty-five. I'm gonna go here. Are you are you like zoomed all the way out? Like, can you see behind? Like, can you see back here? Yes, I can see here. I can see here. I can see here. I just see trees and grass. It's right here. So you don't see two player, two two tokens and a hand token right there. I just see Elvis and me. Well, that one you just pinged was the bad guy. The hand is directly between us two. Is he under? I don't. Well, whatever. Yeah, he's um, under. Is that he's better? Hey, yeah. Okay, that's weird because I put the hand next to the guy, so it's weird that it was covering him. But you know, internet. <laughs> um, so I am here. I am going to uh, Shillelagh, my staff. Okay. Um, so it's going to get all like twisted and weird looking. Um, and then I'm going to whack him in the head. Okay. Like a true Irishman. <laughs> uh, 28 to hit. That will hit. And 13 bludgeoning. Okay. And it counts as magical damage. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, Cassius, you're that's up. That's how that works. When you when you have a spell that turns something it's counts it's magical damage now, then that's it now hits creatures that can't be hit by anything like magic. Is that how that works? Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's how it works in the fifth. It worked differently, you know, like in advance it would give you like plus one and became a plus one weapon. Mm. So any monster that was plus one or better to hit, you could hit. Gotcha. Um all right, uh Cassius, you're up. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm going to come over here, 5, 10, and I'm just going to cast Spare the Dying Hunt again because this is what I'm used to. <laughs> uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, and I'm going to go... At, hold up. 25. That's my hand. Can I occupy the same spot as Big B's hand? I don't believe so. Okay, it doesn't matter. So I can... I can do this, and I can attack through him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like plus seven, so I'm going to sit there and double tap him with Wit's End. Okay. First one's a natural one. Okay. <laughs> it's a natural one. It's a one. Yeah, as I sit there and I find out what a bleeding magical hand looks. Why does it sound like you're rolling two dice? Because I'm rolling three, so I can roll uh, I can uh, my D20, my D10, and my D8 all at the same time. Gotcha. Holy cow, do you eat dinner and be on the shitter at the same time, too, to save time? <laughs> uh, so that will be a 19 to hit. Okay, just barely hits. Uh, that will be 9 slashing damage okay. and 3 fire damage. And no, Sean, this is what it's like when I planned out. What? You just cut out. What? He's, uh, I, I, he cut out, but also uh, I believe he was saying this is what happens when you actually plan your turn out. Um... All right. Uh, anything else with your turn, Cassius? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, this guy is going to. Die. Uh, he's going to make um, an attack at. Uh, he's gonna make two attacks at Albus. He's gonna keep that direction. Oh, I see. Pick on the older gen. Um, elder abuse. Both of those are gonna miss, though. So he is done. Uh, that brings us to Hagrid. Oh. All right, I'm going to move to here and begin my melee assault. <laughs> okay. That is a 22 to hit. That will definitely hit. All right. Uh, that is 13 for the hammer itself. Another five radiant for the uh, arc mm -hmm. or the thunder. 
another four for the improved divine smite, and I have one fourth level spot left, so I'm going to use it. Okay. For an additional 19 radiant damage. Okay. That's he's got a second. Second to oh, he's gone. Okay. Second yeah. attack. I'll save later. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that is that is the second person now, where a column of smoke, uh, basically like. Kind of like how, like when Thor swings Molnir and like a lightning can strike at the same time, like this, you're swinging your hammer and a column of smoke just like, poof, slams him. So I take my big V's hand and I hold it out in a shaking pattern to all those guys that help me. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah, what do you guys want to do now? Hey, um, what did you guys happen to leave anybody alive? You uh, did. You kept saving yeah, that one guy. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, asset. Because been... how are we going to find out what we needed to find? Like, I'm not sure what the mission is per se. Take out criminal organization. How are they going to tell people, hey, crime's a bad idea if we don't leave anybody alive? Mission is go to hell, kill Tiamat. Well, that, <laughs> that's hey, the who's this Hathor? Who's this orc thing? You don't know Kirsten? He does not know no? Neither does Thok, actually. Mm -mm. Uh, this is Crispin. He's high much of the time. Yes, hi. How are you? <laughs> so, how? Wait, did somebody literally just pay us to enact vigilante justice? He didn't wait, you say guys got paid? How, he didn't say oh, how. It wasn't really. It wasn't no paid, paid it was yet. An exchange for uh, a useful item. Let's put it that way. Very useful item that I can't. I want to hold. search these drow because they always have good shit on them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to take a look at this uh, dome thing and see if there seems to be anything special about it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Um, Elvis, um, make an investigation check, and anyone else who wants to loot some buddies. Uh, I want to go right up to the guy who I kept alive, and Ooh. I just want to be there when he comes to. Okay. Uh, 17 for me. 28. Yes. Okay. I got a um, and a um, 18 for Kristen. Okay. Uh, so you guys find... Um, Who's uh, writing this? You are. <clears throat> Everyone. Okay. Uh, math. 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 155 gold. <laughs> Uh, across the bodies, uh, you find um, each of the drow that weren't the wizard ones um, all have uh, short swords on them and hand crossbows, as well as uh, studded leather armor and shields. So, how many is that? Well, I just need honestly, something right on because all my notebooks was... keep disappearing from in there. I'm surprised you didn't use the hand crossbows on us and put us to sleep. That you put none, baby. Uh. Um. So yeah, I mean everything else is uh, fairly fairly unremarkable um, as far as uh, craftsmanship goes. Um, sure. <clears throat> nothing that you can determine without further investigation or uh, spells uh, indicates anything special about them at all. Okay, put everything in a pile. I will cast a spell. I'm going to add the 155 gold to the party currency. Yeah. Cool. You can do that. That's fine. Yep. So add, add all this stuff to a pile, including the wizard stuff, and then I'll cast a spell and let's find out if there's anything special. Won't be special after a dispel magic spell. Um, did, did me looking at the dome, did I notice anything? Uh, yes, we're getting to that. Uh, okay. So I just want to make sure. Uh, so yeah, you guys uh, assemble everything. Uh, instead of casting um, Identify, um, Albus cast Dispel Magic, and nothing is I magical anymore. I did not anymore. cast Dispel Magic. You anymore. said Dispel. I did not. <laughs> yes, you, I did. Did. you did. You too. said it <laughs> multiple <laughs> Wait, times. Dispel. <laughs> I'm even commented on it. Yeah. I heard you comment. I just thought it was odd because I wouldn't have said Dispel. First of all, Dispel did. wouldn't work on it anyways. No, it's like a hip hop one. He wants to cast Dispel. Hip 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 hop hippopotamus. Alvis is, is trying his new hip hop album. Right. You 
<laughs> Unions need to respect their elders. So, were you saying you dispel or agent. this spell? I, well, actually, it's, I was going to say, I said, I thought I said detect magic. I wouldn't have said dispel because it only works on casting spells, not on magic items. Um, and I didn't try to destroy anything, anyways. Dispel magic does not work against spells that are actively being cast. Does it? Since when? Uh, that's since the spell Counterspell exists? Uh, 2014 when 5th edition came out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shut up, Dan. D uh, Dispel Magic works on <laughs> spell effects that are already in action, whereas Counterspell yeah, stops them from being magic, cast. Okay, or identify whichever spell is going to work in 5th edition to find out in mass what we got going on here. I got Ritual for either one, so it's not a spell <laughs> slot. Okay, so right? you will need to then spend the next three hours, because Identify only works on one item. What De about Detect Magic? Detect Magic will just tell you if something is magical. It doesn't tell you anything about the magical effect. Well, then we could at least sort through that later and just put the stuff that's magical in our, in our sack and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so you cast Detect Magic, and it does not appear as though anything is actually magical. Uh, it seems you everything they do is based in the, uh, the poison. The wizard stuff, they just had... It's not like its not like you carry anything that makes your magic happen besides the components. The components themselves aren't magical. It's the incantation and everything that goes into it. I'm talking about the magic items. They didn't have magic Something. items. Well, that's what I was trying to see. Stan. And that's what I was trying to tell you. I said that nothing was magical. The fucking poorest drow I've ever heard of. Okay. Listening Welcome to the skull. Ivy. They're just criminals, man. Not successful. They were doing pretty good until you guys stepped in. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so uh, with that, what do you guys want to do now? Over those ten minutes, I want to see if I can find any magic mushrooms for Crispin. Check what? Out the... That's it. Feed the habit. <laughs> what was the results of uh, Cassius's uh, interrogation? Uh, oh, right. I forgot he was saying that and that also. So, uh, sorry. Um, Leovin, your investigation check, you looked around and you... You couldn't find any openable hatches or anything like that. It seems that there might be some sort of secret button or something else that you're missing. Uh, with your investigation, you did not find what that trigger might be. Okay. Um, Leovin, what or not Leovin, Cassius, what were you wanting to do? I'm waiting for the guy that I knocked out in battle to wake up. Okay. Uh, we'll say he wakes up. And I just sit there. It's like, uh, hey, hey, um, how you doing? Uh, don't freak out because otherwise I'm just gonna have to knock you out. Can you can you sit there and be chill for a second? Um, he he doesn't nod or anything. He just looks at you with uh, like a sort of blazing hatred in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Stoke that fire. Don't worry about that. I want you, you mean to look like around. A, like a vacuous moron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A vacuous I want you to turd. look around and uh, <laughs> see what happened to all of your former friends. Now, they're going to a plane that I'm very familiar with. And let me tell you, it's not terribly enjoyable. And I can send you there with them, or we can leave and go our separate ways. And how this plays out is determined entirely by you. So, which choice would you like to make? The one that helps both of us out, or the one that only helps me out? So, while uh, Cassius is saying this, and he's pointing out the bodies. Could I be removing parts of them and actively eating them? Yes. <laughs> Just to aid him in his intimidation, inadvertently. Uh, is the, or it, persuasion, whichever it is. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, roll an intimidation check with advantage, Cassius. Okay. That's great, because I have a minus one in intimidation. Um... That will end up being a 13. A 13, okay. Um, he spits in your face. Ooh, okay. So, mm. that was the wrong choice. Because you could have walked away here with everything that matters in your life. Uh, I'm going to get big, tall, and angry over here. And we're going to remove your limbs as a sign that you do not steal from Silver. And the worst part here is he's also very good at keeping you alive. And, and it will hurt, and you will spend the rest of your days in physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual misery unless you can serve as a warning that you do not steal from Silvery. 
Now here's your last chance. Would you like to live, live terribly, or die? He, um, go ahead and make a, make a dexterity check, Cassius. Okay. Uh, that will be a 15. A 15. Uh, so you catch him as he, as he, uh, almost quick as lightning goes to slice his neck with the, uh, short sword. You catch his hand, though. No, 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 no. That wasn't one of the options. This isn't you kill you. Don't. I put a lot of effort keeping you alive. You do not take this one away. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. Cash, you, may I speak to him? It depends. Are you going to kill him? I don't think I'm going to kill him. Okay, then go ahead. I'm, don't going, yeah. I'm going to cast Charm. Will it work on him? Uh, let me... You're casting Charm Person? Yes. Although I am a charming person myself. Ah, that's jury's out on that one. That, that <laughs> is definitely debatable. Huh. I see I have my fan club back. Okay. Um, you cast... So you cast a spell on him and it has no effect. Uh, as this comes in, I'll uh, have my old ripped up clothes in my satchel and I rip a piece off of a tunic and I put it right over his head. And then I'm going to cast Create or Destroy Water to create water. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like I said, he had the choice of living, living terribly, or dying. Cassius, we, we know that torture doesn't work. No, no, no. Torture doesn't work if I want to learn anything. That doesn't. That's not the same as torture doesn't work. He 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 makes no sound or struggle at all as you waterboard him. No, uh, he's drowned. Uh, he's when he, when I'm gonna, he, I'm gonna step in. When oh, when uh, when you finish uh, your water to see uh, what the re what the reaction is, uh, he goes uh, from underneath the 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 soaked cloth. He says, uh, "Do what you will. You'll get no information from me." <laughs> no, that's the problem. You think that I want information. What I want is obedience. And I cast the spell again at the second level. Okay, same deal. He does not... Uh, he's going to make a constitution saving throw to see if he uh, survives. Um, oh my god. But uh, he's, 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 he does not scream the entire time. No, no signs of struggle at all. Um, he does... Uh, uh. He he does he does drown. However, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh okay. Cassius. Well, before that happened, I was going to say something, but that's all right. Cassius, I was about to do the good cop. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We accepted a job to sit there and promote justice. If he sat there and said, "Hey, I learned the air." Yes, but Why? I was going to good cop him into not being evil. Uh, help me look around this dome. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, cool. Guys, there's something weird about this we have to figure out. I what? saved his life just to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> just to torture him to death. <laughs> first off, first off, that was merely assault. <laughs> All right. Um, first, don't forget I haven't forgotten the fact that you ended my buzz. <laughs> well, they are being obnoxious. I want to search the dome. Okay, uh, make an investigation check. In the stupid fucking box. Okay. Um, that is. I, I want to do something after. Okay. Not very good. It's twelve. Okay. Yep. Same deal. It just looks like a dome. You couldn't find a trigger or anything to open the hatches that they came out of. Okay. Back to the fresh meats. All right, uh, Laven. What do you want to do? Um, I want to climb to the top of this dome. Okay. <clears throat> and see if we pop to the tower. Nope. Well, I mean, first of all, does anything happen when I just stand in the middle? No. Okay. And then I want to straight down cast Pass Wall. Okay. Um, to try to create a passage. Uh, Can I investigate to see if there's any secret buttons on there? I'm pretty so good at snooping. I can go 20 feet deep. 
Okay. Um. All right. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh. So you create a pass wall underneath yourself. <laughs> yep. And uh, you fall. <laughs> yep. Uh, fifty feet. <laughs> oh, whoops! And take fifty. Fifty. Um. Uh, force damage, bludgeoning damage, oh, yeah, as you I hit the ground the at the floor. bottom of this uh, shaft. Um, Wait, as you're falling, you see uh, ladders up the sides, <laughs> just screaming, pa- like rungs on ladders. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if only you have the parachute. <laughs> Is there any chance I can wild shape as a reaction? Um, I'm going to go with no, because you... <laughs> because of... Um, because you put this underneath yourself. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's like when you're playing Minecraft. You just there's like oh there's lava. Yeah. Well, I, I am I am on the ground and unconscious. <laughs> We're basically gods. <laughs> if only one of us had revivify, and I'm not capped at second level spells. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. So you guys, uh, you you guys see as um, as Levin, uh just falls through the roof. <laughs> um, Can I now do an investigation check myself? It turns out there's a ladder the entire time. You you guys hear a really sort of sickening thud, um, and you don't hear anything else after that. I'm searching the dome on the outside for any... Okay, make an investigation check. Thank you. Uh, can I search one of the um, pillars around it, then? Sure, make an investigation 18. check. 18! What do I find? Nothing. Really? Yes. This is a criminal uh, organization. 15. What did you say? It's a criminal organization. Uh, a 15 reveals nothing on the columns. Alright, All right. I'm going to try and expedite this. Okay. So I want to, because I have no better reason than not to, uh, cast Conjure Woodland Beings. Okay. <laughs> I want to summon two dryads. Okay. I want to have them talk to the fucking trees and beasts around here and figure out how the fuck this thing opens. And have them relay it to me because they speak Elvish and I speak Elvish. Where is it? The orc, they're pretty sneaky. See if he can find something. Wow, just such in-group racism. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. We have a problem with sitting there categorizing drow, but a friend of ours. <laughs> okay, so, um, Leavin, uh, you, over the course of th- this investigation process, um, you, you die. Um, what? But... <sighs> Before anything really changes, you <laughs> you wake back up. <laughs> Am I in hell again? No, you're still at the bottom of this shaft. Uh, what just happened? Um, you ask what just happened of the darkness, and <laughs> yeah. nothing answers. Um, can I, can I see the top? Yes. Like the hole You can, you can see some moonlight sort of is, streaking in obliquely through the hole in the roof. And this is just straight up darkness that I'm in. Uh, yes. Wait a second, Corey. Yes. There's a hole that we can't see? Is that what you're telling us? No, uh, you were looking so for a way in. I There's a through. hole that he made and he fell through because he put it under his feet. <laughs> um... Uh, I'm gonna produce a flame. Okay. So I can maybe see. Mm-hmm. I thought you had a dark vision. How the hell do I fail an investigation check for a hole in the middle of the? the Be- because you I didn't pay attention and listen to the fact that he made a hole. You were looking for a way in. You were looking for a trigger. That's specifically what you said. Yes, yeah, scratch. That's exactly what I said. Do you get my soul now? What? I don't understand the reference, and it doesn't fucking matter right now, okay? So, Laven, you've cast Produce Flame. You see um, some tunnels heading off in, in various directions around you. Uh, you don't see any light or um, 
hear any sound coming from them uh, at this time. Um, is there a ladder? <laughs> yes, there are a couple ladders that go up the side of the shaft towards the roof. I should have looked for ladders. Um, can I sit there and go from the giant gaping hole that Laven created and I just sit there and it's like, hey, you're right down there. there. I was about to say, I'm just going to shout up. Uh, just, just jump on down. <laughs> I feel like it didn't work out for you. You, you. You, you can see, I... Cassius, from, from the hole that the flame that Laven has in his hand is quite a ways down. I, I only died, but I woke up. It's okay. I've got something that may help. Crispin took it. It worked out. You guys come in? No. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Uh, how many tunnels are there down here? Um, about five leading off in various directions. Uh, I'm just going to pick a random one. Um, say north, it, the northmost one. Okay. Uh, and kind of walk towards that. Okay. And I'm going to hope that everybody kind of comes down eventually, but... Yeah, real quick question. Yes. How long are we playing for? Um, About another hour and 15 minutes. Oh, cool. I mean, I got all night. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Is there any way for us to get to the ladders without falling to our immediate doom um you you look around and you see that if there is a way for you to get about the 10 feet from the hole that Laven created to the sides uh you could probably take the ladder down um and potentially find a inside trigger uh to open the hatch uh does anybody have a whole bunch of rope and we can rappel down the hole and get to the ladders one at a time Quick question. Was my dryad thing just completely useless? I've got 50 feet of rope. That's a, I got 50 feet of rope. Um, yes, because uh, the the trees and the beasts and stuff like that, while they have seen the drow coming and going and they do corroborate that, um, they have not um, worried themselves with finding out exactly how they're coming in and out because they're not doing anything to the nature um, to where that would cause them to be uh, fearful or um, more than just watching them from, you know, their trees and, and whatnot. Does anyone have any extra rope? Because I saw somebody measuring it. I, I additionally cut. have 50 feet of rope as I checked my gear. So um, it's time to get it. Arguably, it'd take about 15 feet of rope to wrap it around one of the pillars. Another 20 to get it to the hole, which gives us 15 feet to play with. Um, before tying myself to it, I'd like to see if that would be enough rope to swing to one of the ladders. Just with one one segment of fifty foot rope. Yeah, go ahead and make uh make an intelligence check. Uh nine. Based on your physic based on your physical abilities and the amount of rope you have, you think that it could probably work. Okay. Before Cassius does that, mm -hmm. I want to yell down to Leavin if he's still within earshot. Tell him to climb one of the ladders open up the hatch for us and we could all just go in that way. Oh, where's um, the fun in that? Really good job, Dad. Laven, make a perception think. check. Okay. Oh, that's a natural 20. Okay, yeah, you do hear that. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I'll... How much, uh, did I, how much health do I have right now? By the way? Uh, you're at one hit point. Okay. Um... Um, I'm gonna start crawling up the ladder. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it takes you uh, a few minutes to climb uh, 50 feet of ladder. Um, you're not a particularly strong individual, so it is it's pretty tiring. But you get up to the top um, using your uh, produce flame again. You're able to see um, that there is a small uh, inside the mechanism is much easier to find. Um, you're able to uh, like basically click a, a switch and uh, one of the side hatches opens. You're welcome. <laughs> All I was trying to say is... You know, even a blind squirrel switch. finds a nut occasionally. I'm not crawling back up here. Um, I'm going to slide down the ladder. 
<laughs> Not that fast, Corey. <laughs> Are you going to do a submariner or submariner style where you put your feet on the side? And... Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, it, uh, the whole first splinter. splinter built into the wall and now, you just fall. You, you, make it about hey. you make it about 20 feet of sliding and your hands start to really burn, so you, you decide that that's probably not best. <laughs> <laughs> now roll for a splinter. <laughs> You take one splinter damage, and you're dead again. <laughs> and you're unconscious again. And you fall another ten feet, you're dead again. <laughs> We're basically gods. <laughs> All right. Who here can heal? No problem, man. Um, did everybody come down? Begrudgingly. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. Um, at the... Let's see. <laughs> the fourth level. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to get... Twenty-two plus... Where is it? Five. Twenty-seven back. All right. okay. I'm also going to sit there, and I'm new to this, you know, clericking thing. And I think that there might have been someone who uh, uh, afflicted his mind, and I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration to give him control of his faculties again. <laughs> Me? Knowing full well, yeah, yes, knowing full well it's going to fail <laughs> as a player. <laughs> and I just sit there, like, feeling better now, buddy? Uh... All Strangely, is gone. <laughs> I think so. I'm gonna have my two dryads come force feed him a total of six good berries. Okay. How much? Uh, how many hit points do good berries give back? One hit point. Okay. So six more oh, hit nice. points as you have but enough <laughs> sustenance to survive for 24 hours. <laughs> And you guys wonder why we TPK'd. You just, you just get these <laughs> these these very sweet but fibrous berries just like jammed in your face by these two triads. <laughs> They're like like one of them is jamming them in while the other one's like chewing for you. <laughs> I, I try to like seem sort of grateful and kind of like nod. And, like, oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna poof them back out. All right, you guys want to pick a direction or split up? Split the no. party. That's always the best plan. Films, <laughs> let's split up. I I could definitely use some silence right now, and I will totally search a tunnel if left my own devices. Totally. That worked out so well before. I'm not good at reading sarcasm. Oh, this isn't sarcasm at all. This is the utmost sincerity. <laughs> all right, split the party. I'm still going to that northernmost tunnel. Okay. Uh, um, whether anybody follows me or not. Uh, anybody who is uh, e exploring the tunnels, go ahead and um, make a make a survival check. Hmm. At disadvantage if you don't have dark vision. Oh, no. do it. Do I have dark vision? I think you're a human, aren't you? And you didn't take I your. Know, but uh, I, I think I have it based off of being a blood hunter at a specific level. Do I have nope, a... I need to take Nadi in order to get it. Mm. Do I have a flame active? Yes. Okay. I mean, I have dark vision. I just meant for everybody else, if right. that helps. Uh, survival, if we don't have dark vision, so I don't tell you. Okay. Um, uh, Can I just repeatedly yeah, no. cast Sacred Flame in order to give me... Some small moments of, of light. <laughs> sure. You still have disadvantage, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you just poof, poof, poof. Ah, it doesn't last long enough. It's like using a camera flash to see your way through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I mention that I'm new to being a cleric? <laughs> All right. Uh, what'd you guys roll? 19. Okay. Zero. You can get a zero? Yeah, I got a zero. Anybody else? Okay, I rolled a four. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> so you guys, uh, as you're exploring these tunnels, you see there's like some some cross tunnels and things like that, and um, you, you actually wind up, uh, despite uh, I think a couple of you took different tunnels, you actually wind up running back into each other. Um, and you haven't seen any like rooms or anything like that. Um, and uh, anyone who wants to go ahead and make an intelligence check for me. Uh, First shit's going to get 11. 11. Okay. 24. All right. I got a one. <laughs> uh, Elvis, um, you uh, you recall that uh, sometimes these criminal organizations use uh, intricate uh, symbols and whatnot in order to uh, convey things uh, to one another. Um, not only would uh, Crispin be unfamiliar with their particular set of symbols, uh, having not dealt with the criminal underbelly of Silvery Moon, um, but he's also too fucked out of his mind to actually read anything anyway. I love how the drug just gets stronger and stronger as our session goes on. <laughs> <laughs> we go like, oh, what a mild psychedelic. To Dude, he's on the worst fucking trip ever. Plot armor. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I kind of go to him, uh, to Laven, and goes like, yeah, so when you fell down, you didn't happen to die, did you? I'm pretty confident I did. You know I'll help you. And I just give a like hand him a piece of the uh, the psychedelic fruit. <laughs> Is this bark good berries? This is a great berry. Corey. Yes. Can I like roll an insight roll to see if I something pops into my head that maybe I've perused over in the libraries or whatever? Well, okay, so because of being... You're a human, correct? No, I'm a half-elf. Half-elf, okay. So because you're not um, of full fey um, origins, um, magic is not as um, intrinsic to you as it is to, say, a full-blooded elf. Uh, so most of your time has been spent studying uh, arcane symbols and practicing over and over again until you're actually able to do those. Uh, so the ability to study... Uh, criminal elements as well as intricately their uh, different call signs and counter signs and things like that you did not have time for. Way to stymie me. <laughs> also, you do not speak thieves can't. Yeah, but I can hum a few bars. All right, so uh, your investigation, you guys didn't see any more uh, drow, uh, didn't see any signs of any more uh, drow being down here. Um, With uh, taking roguish archetype stuff and knowing thieves can't, did I make note of any kind of that symbology around? There, You did notice, because you rolled a, what, a 19 for your survival? Yes. So you did notice there were uh, some... Not necessarily symbols. It seems that are using something more subtle than that. You noticed something, but you can't because you're not familiar with the group. Make heads or tails of it. Okay. Because uh, they're not using like a um, sort of a generic thieves can't where other people can find them. Uh, this is very much a secret organization uh, intent on keeping their secrets. Okay. Hmm. Um, what are the walls made out of? Is this like stone tunnels? Is this just tunnels under the... They earth? are um, They're carved stone tunnels. They're not as well carved as the uh, ruins above you. Um, there are some parts that seem like uh, there might have been some masonry at one time, but it has crumbled. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's, it's traversable. It's not like it was made by some sort of worm. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're stone. Okay. Hold on one second, guys. We went, yeah, what were the terms of this job? No idea. <clears throat> oh, I, th I think we've probably fulfilled the terms of the job. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that there's, uh, we're not leaving something for more drow to pick up the organization. 
So it specifically has to be us. Like we can yeah, just I mean, give the city guard the location. It's like, hey, go check this. Give us yeah, all the but, cool shit. But the city guard. Right, that's our bill. The city guard was, at least some of the city guard were kind of uh, under the dole of these people. They were okay, getting we'll paid take, off. Yeah, we'll take a few heads, put them on pikes. Uh, Corey, what well, would you classify this terrain generally as? Um, in regards to these caverns we're in, um, cave. <laughs> well, it, I'm just curious if it would fall under the mountain category, as in like mountain caves. Because, um, you know, assuming they are in rock. I suppose. Glory. Uh, Let me question you. Yeah. So you'd say I see these symbols, but I don't understand them, correct? Uh, you probably um, haven't, because they're so much more subtle than typical okay, like generic thieves but... can't. You probably haven't noticed them. Oh, I haven't noticed them. No. I thought you said I did. No, I I merely stated that you you don't speak thieves can't, and you didn't like study charlatans and their you know their ways so you don't have much knowledge in the way of how to find that stuff i really need a divination spell could i make another survival check to see if any of the tracks outside of ours abruptly end into a wall or something of that nature um sure go ahead That is 16. Uh, it does not look like it. It seems like there's probably a pretty... It, it's not like there's a secret passage. It seems like between the five tunnels that are down here, there's a fairly complex network of um, hallways and things like that. And if you chose the right ones uh, based on the symbol symbology uh, that you've noticed on the walls, uh, you might be able to find where, you know, the... Um, where something else might be, um, but without um, w without that, I mean, you could spend days down here and get nowhere. So, leaning towards... Were there offshoots on the other tunnels as we made our ways back here? Yes, there's offshoots and offshoots of offshoots. So, thinking about it, I'm kind of getting the vibe that this is similar to that obnoxious maze that we were in before, and we may need to make note of the symbols and figure out which one is reoccurring consistently and follow said path. I think all those people weren't here with us last time for that one. Uh, guys, let's take the hint and get the hell out of here go back to the town. That's, That's what I was trying to say. Um, I am going to uh, wild shape into a bloodhawk and fly on out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as you do that, um, I'll take uh, my boy Soggy over there. A um, couple of hands, maybe a, maybe a head or two. Proof that we did a job. Okay. I'm hoping nobody's looking up my robes as I'm climbing the ladder. <laughs> well, if you're that worried about your um, um, your innocence, maybe you should climb up last. <laughs> I just don't want to embarrass them. Um, all right, so uh, you guys are heading back into town then? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. I'm going back to <clears throat> Shopkeeper if he's awake. Okay. Um, by the time you guys get back, uh, having uh, explored the tunnels and done the fight and everything, uh, it's verging on daybreak. Um, shops are starting to open up. Uh, you travel back to where the merchant was, um, and um, uh, how are you guys showing him that uh, you've completed the task? Cash is just oh. dumping out a bag of parts. <laughs> uh, I, I was hoping you would so take much... my word. <laughs> it's not that unceremonious, but we sit there and said, uh, yeah, we found a couple of crits. They did not 
agree to our more sensible idea of justice. So we gave them the less sensible one. Um, it's in the satchel. You don't have to look at it. But if you want to, it's going to be pretty gruesome. Sorry. Yeah. He, he, he looks at how soggy the satchel is, um, contemplates for a minute, kind of looks between the two of you and goes... Yeah, no, let me just get the cloak. <laughs> so uh, he hands you the cloak of protection, Leavin, uh, as well as a uh, coin purse. Um, inside, you guys find uh, 500 gold pieces. Um, I toss the bag of gold to uh, Thok okay. to Ooh. keep for the party. Adding two funds. So just out of curiosity, when Dr. Cassius paid for a lifetime of drinks, who was he paying that from? Our, My own our personal party. stash. What? My own personal stash. Yeah. He was uh, he was paying for uh, for a uh, an essential NPC uh, to uh, drink for free at the at the tavern that they were at. For what very short life that man has ahead of him. And uh, also, uh, Cassius, um, sort of out of character, you know, are you uh, the the they uh, Anthar and Leosin were traveling. They weren't. Uh, they don't live here in Silvery Moon. Um, and the leftover money uh, from uh, whatever other tabs they incurred while in Silvery Moon is getting sent with them. Mm -hmm. Um. Then uh, during the night, whenever that is, I'm gonna adorn the cloak of protection with some of that. Uh, green dragon skin. Okay. So it matches the rest of my stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, with your druid craft, you can you can probably do that pretty well. You can like create like twine to like go in there and stuff. So yeah, you, you can you can do that pretty well. Cool. And I've noticed none of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you did have you guys? Uh, does anybody have any uh, climbing equipment or anything like that that they've purchased or would like to? I think that would be reasonable, right? I trust in my spider climb abilities. <laughs> Just don't make any holes underneath yourself, huh? Yes. Yeah, I would. I would like to buy climbing kits. How much would that cost? Uh, so I sent you guys um an inventory. It should be in your uh, journal still, but I believe it's twenty-five yeah. gold pieces for a climber's kit. Uh, uh, yes. I don't think everyone in the party is going to need to have one. I think if you have one, maybe two of them, you guys could probably. Uh, get the job done because it's not like you're climbing straight up a sheer cliff the entire time. It's just for like when you encounter that kind of stuff. I'd buy two of those. Okay, in case one breaks. Sure. I shall remove from the party funds. No, I'll pay for this on my personal stash. Well, how about we do Corey. one from your personal and one party fund so you're not taking the whole brunt of it? Corner, are we in? Um, we're in town, right? Yes. Is there a place I could purchase scrolls? Um, as you guys have asked around, uh, no, there were no scrolls of uh, of magic for sale. It seems like whatever is uh, whatever was in the journal that I sent you guys is is what is available for purchase. Where's that journal at? Because I must have missed that. Uh, if you open up like the this like where the chat window is, and you click the newspaper looking guy at the top, uh, there should be. Wait a minute, chat is in on Discord? No, on Roll Twenty. Roll twenty. That's the map. Okay. So chat. What's wrong with that? What the hell? There is a Rod of the Pact Keeper available for 16,000 gold, uh, a Gem of Brightness available for 5,000 gold, Climber's Kits on sale for 25 gold pieces, and Traveler's Clothes for 2 gold pieces. Okay, so no potions or any of that sort. No, like this is not a... Uh, it's not on a trade route, um, so it's not a uh, high economy city um, where you guys might find some of that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Not so much for that idea. Okay. I have another question. Kind of yeah. I could have sworn I got the wish spell because I got ninth level spells, but it's not showing up on my thing. Um. Did you, there was there was a spell that you were between between wish and something else, right? Did you take any? Uh, do you have any ninth level spells in your? No, just all my. Uh... Just might not have added it. Maybe that's what it is. But it's all spells I already have. 
Um, yeah, I'll just have to. You'll have to take care of that. Uh, maybe after the session or something. Yeah, it looks like you didn't save whatever spells you took. Oh, not a big deal. I mean, wish spells pretty pricey. Right. Um, it was just cool to have. Just totally cool to have. Yeah. I finally got there. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, how do you guys want to go about um, getting ready to leave for Silvery Moon? You guys leaving today? Um, it's uh, you guys have been up for quite a while. Um, I, I I demand we sleep. <laughs> uh, hold on, I have to go see one more private vendor, and then I'll be. Quit buying there. drugs. But, but we're sleeping first. No, 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 I'll I'll be ten minutes behind you. Don't worry. It's just an alleyway. I have to go in. Can can we sleep first? You you go right ahead. We don't need to sleep in the same bed. Anymore. <laughs> that was a little weird that we kept on having to do that. It's true. You guys do all have your own rooms at the Royal Apartments. <laughs> well, because Leavin is being obnoxious and demanding sleep, two more dryads and six more good berries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look, I'm just sitting there and saying, is that's a uh, uh, who knows how long we have our second life? Let's at least enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, third life. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. uh, my apologies, everybody, but Cassius, uh, you guys uh, head back to the Royal Apartments to uh, get ready to uh, rest and recuperate. Uh, you know, you grab some some breakfast on your way in, uh, kind of like the reverse of like how you do a hotel. You know, like you get back there at night, you sleep, you take breakfast on the way out. You guys are taking breakfast and like taking it up to your rooms to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> Cash is. Uh, are you wanting to delve into this business that you're making for yourself, or is this? Uh... No, 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 no. I just. How much money do I need to throw at it so that you could just always assume I have that item in my inventory? Uh, we can talk about that after the game. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so I I make that exchange and then I go back up. I take my breakfast and I pass out. Okay. All right. Uh, so and after. After uh, eating, uh, coming down uh, from various drugs or getting back on them, uh, sometimes both, um, uh, sleeping and eating again, uh, it is the basically the dawn of the next day. Um, you guys have gotten a long rest, um, so all your spell slots and health is back. Leavin, I know you really needed that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you guys are ready uh, as much as you as much as you can be for uh, heading out uh, for uh, Mount Celestia. Um, because you guys bought uh, the climbers kits, um, it only takes you about two days to climb to the top, which isn't too bad considering it's completely above the clouds. Um, guys, remember to periodically stop and just get used to breathing so that the oxygen doesn't mess with you too bad. <laughs> um, so you're not sure when it was that you stopped climbing um, a uh, worldly mountain and began climbing the single sacred mountain of Mount Celestia. Um, but as you get above the cloud cover, you notice that the mountain that you're climbing um, off to the side rises from a shining silver sea uh, to heights uh, barely visible and honestly utterly incomprehensible. Um, there are seven plateaus that you can sort of see on your way, on the on the way up, um, marking the seven heavenly layers. Uh, it's one of the few plain, or one of the few places on the plains where travelers can let down their guard. Um, you see the occasional um, celestial being uh, kind of going about their business. Um, they don't seem to pay you much mind. Um, uh, gazing towards the peak, though, you can't help but be filled with an overwhelming sense of awe. Uh, but after a few moments, uh, you remember that you're here for a reason, uh, and you step forward to press onwards. Um... So you guys keep climbing. So uh, at the dawn of the second day, you arrive at this massive temple. Um, upon entering, you guys all see uh, the statue of an old man surrounded by seven golden canaries. Thok and Albus, you guys recognize this old man immediately. Um, oh my god, buddy! After, uh, after a few moments, the statue? the statue in front of you, uh, it shimmers. Uh, and the old man disappears, and a large statue of Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon, replaces it, flanked uh, along a like a raised area behind by seven golden dragon statues. As you uh, see this change happen and your eyes are drawn towards the statues of the golden dragons, you see uh, on the wall behind them six doors pop up out of nowhere. Leave, I'm going to be honest here. 
I haven't taken any of that fruit yet, but I really kind of wish I did for this. <laughs> it's pretty cool without. Um, why six doors, though? Uh, there are six of you. Um, Chris so is, is, is I was asking that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> DM's too invested. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but why male models? <laughs> like, I, mean, you I, just, I just explained this. Well, I was just... <laughs> I was trying to go off of the seven golden dragons and seven heavens and all that. <laughs> um, do the doors have uh, like any writing or anything? They're just doors? Uh, no, they're, they're all... Um, I mean, they're very ornate. Uh, the the uh, frames around the doors have like almost like a... like the indentations like how columns have uh there's like golden filigree all all like kind of weaving around it like vines and uh uh going up towards the top into like golden flowers adorning the facade of the of the doorway um so they're very nice looking but other than that there's no real um writing or anything on them um as you guys kind of uh, you know, you, you hesitate a little bit. You're like, "This is this is very strange." Um, all of you hear in your head uh, the voice of Bahamut, um, and in your mind, he says that he awaits you behind one of the doors. Um, you will be alone, but you will be safe. I await you on the other side of the door. Um, so at this point, we're going to do something kind of crazy. This is an idea that I've had that I really want to try, and if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. Um, we're actually going to, um, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do before we actually do it so you guys can ask questions. Everyone's going to mute their microphones. Um, How do I do that? In, in Discord, there should be a microphone icon for you to click, and it will mute your microphone. Um, when? I will, I will tell you when. Uh, so what we're going to do, you're going to mute your microphone, and you're also going to turn off your sound. And you're going to stay keyed in on Discord, because when it's your turn, I'm going to type into Discord that it's your turn, and you will unmute your microphone, turn your sound back on. You know, uh, Mike and uh, Scott and Jay, you guys will just take your headsets off and put them back on when you see your name. I don't want to do any of this shit. Hmm? Um, but... Uh, so yeah, so basically you're going to be going through these things alone. Uh, once your turn is over, you will re-mute your microphone, but you do not need to ta turn your sound off. Once you're done, you're able to listen in on everyone else. Um, does anyone have any questions? No, I'm all good. I'm so to if go I hit the microphone, what is that? Uh, what was that, Sean? If I hit the microphone, what does that do? It should mute your microphone. What do the headset things do? It makes you not hear things. Yeah. Because oh. you're not supposed to hear what other people hear. I understood that. I just didn't know how to do it on my thing. Yeah. So uh, how do you guys want to um, decide the order of how we go through this? Do you guys want to roll initiative? I'll roll for initiative. Okay. I'll volunteer to go last. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't care. I think probably roll. Yeah, let's just all roll. That way there's um, no... We'll roll, and, and uh, Jay, since you would like to go last, uh, you're, it's totally okay for you to do that. So, um, yeah. Just question, are we each going through our own door? Yes. Or Okay. That's what I wasn't sure about. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have gone into somebody else's door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'm going to mute my mic right now, actually. Okay. Uh, so we're just rolling initiative rolls? Yeah. And then just tell me the number. Uh, 13. Okay. Ooh. Dirty 20. Same. 22. Okay. Um, between Thok and Haggard, which one of you guys would like to go first? I'll go uh, first. Okay. okay. Why did Mike disappear from old 20? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, wait a minute, I gotta start. Wait a minute, I gotta do something here. Am I taking my headphones off or? No, nope, you're gonna... you're actually first, so you you don't have to do anything until we're done. Oh. So. Am I um, back yet? Nope. Uh, so I will. We're we're getting to the point now. So everybody, uh, mute your mics. If you're wearing headphones, take them off. If not, uh, mute the system, and keep an eye on Discord for your turn.
just uh, waiting for you to mute your mic, Mike. Okay. All right. So, Albus. Uh, yeah. As you enter the doorway, you Wait, come into. There's still some people that can hear. No, they're uh, they took their headphones off. That's why they didn't hit the oh. button. All right. So as you enter the room, uh, you open the doorway, and inside is a bright white room, uh, seemingly infinite in space. Um, inside the room uh, f- floats a golden canary. Uh, as you step into the room, the golden canary turns into a young man. He asks you. Have you come to kill me? No. Why? He he steps forward towards you and draws a golden blade and holds it to your throat and asks you, why shouldn't I kill you right now? Because I haven't done anything to deserve, to warrant such a thing. Good, good God, what is wrong with the people nowadays? <laughs> Can't go anywhere without somebody trying to kill me. Um, Elvis, make a persuasion check for me. Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> oh, God. Roll like you've never rolled in your life. <laughs> That's not it. Four. Guess I'm dead. Okay. So, the man removes his blade from your throat. And uh, he regards you with a sort of a mournful look. Um, He turns back into a golden canary and flies away from you. And where there wasn't previously an end to this room, he flies into what appears to be some sort of wall. And as his form passes through it, a door appears and opens up. I guess I'm going to go through the door even though I failed the test for some odd reason. Okay. Um, So with that, uh, you going through the door, you arrive in another room. Um, We will get to that um, in the end. So go ahead, uh, mute your mic, and and you can leave the sound on, but just mute the mic. Mute the mic. So that's just the microphone button. It's not muting. Right. Okay, Corey, you got a problem here. What's up? Wait, this one. There we go. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right, I'm here. All right. All right, so Hagrid, you step forward through the doorway and you find yourself in a room of bright white and infinite expanse. Um, Before you uh, floats a golden canary. As you step into the room, the canary turns into a strong, tall woman. She stands there for a moment, regards you, and asks, Do you believe that you can stay someone's blade with your force of will alone? Like to respond? Yeah. I believe it's possible if you believe strongly enough in yourself. Show me. Unleash the full fury of your heritage. Uh, I want you to um, make an intimidation check. And um, I want you to add uh, either your strength or charisma bonus. um, Whichever one is uh, higher. It was a 16. It went to a 3. Shit. I believe my... Charisma is, yeah, it's a plus 14, so it's a 17. A 17, okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, after you uh, unleash this this guttural uh, just anger, like everything that you've been feeling since you came back, all of that uncertainty and rage and 
hope and hopelessness, this this you being tugged in so many directions at once, you just unleash that fury and angst and anger. And uh, afterwards, uh, you're panting, and she looks at you, she goes, Do you feel you can do the same when you face odds so great? Hope seems a distant light. Uh, she turns into, at this point, a golden five-headed dragon. Every tapestry that you've seen that, that shows the visages of Tiamat, this is it, except it's a golden dragon instead of being five chromatic heads and all that stuff. Her jaws are gnashing and flashing teeth. I want you to go ahead and do the same thing. Another intimidation check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Very good. So, as you again uh, tap into this this in, internal uh, power and uh, confidence and fury, and you unleash this this an, another roar of all of your full Goliath heritage and your uh, you know the experience and strength that you've earned from you know from Kiri Jolith and from your friends and your accolades across you know your life lives. Um, and uh, once you do, the canary, or the dragon, turns back into a canary. And she flies uh, f away from you, towards where there was previously no wall or barrier or anything, and passes through into some invisible barrier. And uh, this uh, ornate door, this ornate golden dragon's head appears, and the jaw opens, and on the other side you see that there's a doorway. Uh, like there's, there's a, another room. All right. <clears throat> well, if I have the option to uh, act, then I'm going to walk into the dragon's mouth and go through the door. Okay. Very good. Uh, go ahead and mute your microphone for me. You uh, you there, Mike? Come on, bear. Come on. Good boy. Mike, you there? There What's you are. What's up? All right. So, uh, Thok, as you as you pass, you step through your doorway. You enter a a brilliantly white room, seemingly of uh, infinite space. Um, as you walk in, uh, you see a golden canary uh, fly flitting in the air in front of you. Um, as you as you approach the canary, it turns into a well built. It turns into a man with a well built figure and a gaze of steel. A flash of movement happens, and Thok, I want you to make a perception check for me. Mm-hmm. That is 19. 19, okay. Um, what initially appeared to be uh, a move, a, a threatening type of um, movement, it actually shows this figure making a defensive move um, to, to be uh, more, more willing and able to defend themselves. You know, uh, it's not um, them showing you a threat, it's them uh, basically giving you deference. The figure asks you, do you believe me to be friend or foe? Are you dragon? Do you believe me to be friend or foe? Foe? What do you believe to be the difference between the two? Dragon or not dragon? Okay, um, I want you to make a perception check with disadvantage. Okie dokie. Oh, let's see here. Where's my other 20? So that is a total of 20. Total of 20. Very good. Okay. So uh, as you uh, like lock eyes with this figure, um, you know, he's standing 
not uncomfortably close to you, but close enough where you could sort of see uh, reflections um, in his eyes, and you actually notice uh, very briefly um, what looked like someone behind you. And you take a step to the side, just as an ethereal blade passes through where your your you know your heart basically used to be from behind. As this blade stands there, it evaporates into wisps of nothing, and um, the uh, the canary, the man in front of you, says. Uh, very good. And he turns into a canary again and flies away from you. And as he reaches a certain distance away from you, where there once appeared to be no wall or barrier, um, a, a golden dragon's head appears and the mouth opens to reveal uh, a doorway very similar to the one you came through. Mm-hmm. So I want to shoot the fucking canary. There is no more canary. The canary like passed through the barrier and where it passed through this doorway became. Oh, then I'm going after that canary. Okay. So you that uh, just gonna get shot at. You uh, you knock an arrow and you 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 don't do a full pull obviously because you don't run around like that. But you've got tension on the bowstring ready to pull and and shoot quickly if you need to, and you rush through the doorway into another room and um, we will pick back up on that uh, when we come back. There is no canary on the other side, though, when you get to the other side. Hmm. All right. Uh, so go ahead and uh, mute your mic again, and I'm going to grab the next person. Bye. All right, Laven, can you hear me? I am turn. Okay. All right. So, as you step through the doorway, you enter a room of infinite white space, um, and flying, flitting in the air in front of you is a golden canary. As you uh, cross through the threshold of the doorway and take a step into the room, the canary turns into a venerable-looking man. He asks Leavin, or he asks you, sorry, do you believe you can push aside your fear to uphold justice? as much as I can. So as you answer, the scenery around you begins to change. The brilliant white room turns into a dimly lit cavern. Behind the, small, behind the man is a small pond. As you look over the scenery, you recall uh, that this looks very similar to a cave that you've once been in. And as you're having this uh, realization, uh, the man in front of you changes forms once again into a green dragon However, he is wreathed in a golden uh, aura. Um, so, as you see this happening, you start to feel that, that cold fist of fear clench your gut. And the dragon lunges forward, jaws hungry and gaping. I want you to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20, very good. The dragon passes through you harmlessly. And as the sort of freight train effect of a lunging dragon passes through you, you're sort of pushed, you know, sort of backwards. It's more of a mental thing. There's actually no force that actually pushes you, but you, you sort of step backwards instinctively. And uh, as you look back up, uh, the golden carry is once again flying in front of you. Um, you see this canary sort of flit around and then it turns around and flies away from you and where there was previously no wall or barrier the canary sort of disappears uh, through one and um, a golden dragon's head very large appears on the wall and the jaw opens and inside instead of a mouth it's more of a statue and uh, there is a uh, an opening to what looks like another room through the other side um, I'm gonna kinda look around first and then head towards the entrance okay all right uh that's it go ahead and mute your mic and we're gonna grab jay all right i proceed through my door okay uh so as you uh as you get inside uh you you see a, a, a bright white room, uh, seeming of infinite space. 
uh, flying in front of you in the air is a golden canary. And as you step through the doorway, this golden canary turns into a lovely maiden with her hands behind her back. She asks you, do you keep secrets? Yes. I've had quite a few. Do you keep secrets knowing that it would hurt someone? I have, and I haven't. It's one that constantly comes with weighing of the risks. And how does the weight change if it's someone you know? I wish I had a good answer for you. Because sometimes it's for them, and most of the time it was for me. As one who keeps secrets, do you know when someone else is keeping a secret from you? More often than not. Are you intentionally asking me vague questions? She repeats the question. If you're going to make me repeat my answer more <laughs> often than not. <clears throat> she asks you... Um, do you believe that what's behind my back might kill you? And I want you to make an insight check. I'm gonna use the lucky feet. Okay. Okay, that will be a 23. 23, alright. Um, as you um, you look and in, in, in your mind you, you believe... Um, Yes, she, she probably is holding something behind her back that may kill you. And she pulls out from behind her back a golden dagger. And you see that the blade is dripping with poison. Upon showing you this and you making the realization, she turns back into a canary and flies away from you. And where there was previously no wall or barrier, uh, she passes through and the uh, a statue resembling the he the uh, head of a like an ancient golden dragon appears and opens its jaws and uh, inside instead of being a you know a gaping maw leading to his stomach and sure doom is uh, another doorway did the dagger stay in the room or did the maiden take it uh the maiden took it, it was uh it was um made of the same sort of golden aura that she was made of okay kind of look around see how sterile the room is and once there's some ringing in my ears <laughs> I just sit there and go alright screw it and I walk through the door okay um, very good at this point uh, everybody go ahead and unmute your microphones alright Alright, uh, still waiting on uh, Uncle Sean. There we go, alright. Okay, so, you guys uh, go through your your uh, your doorways into another room uh, full of, of seeming uh, white space. Um, wait, Mike, are you here? <laughs> Mike? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> He's typing. <laughs> I hear him typing. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> Corey says take headset off. I take headset off. No, I said I... you could listen while it wasn't your turn if you'd already gone. Yeah. Nope, take headset off. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so you guys... <laughs> you guys... Uh... Oh man, hold on a second. Um, that was weird. Uh, so you guys enter the uh, enter the room. Um, Thok, you uh, you rush in uh, expecting a golden canary, but instead uh, you just see the visage of Bahamut. Uh, his golden canary is uh, absent. Uh, it's in his old man form. Uh, to to Thok, he appears as an old man. Uh, to everyone else, you guys actually see him as his platinum dragon form. Uh, Thok. Um, in the back of your mind, uh, there is sort of a, almost a, a calming sensation. Uh, you feel as though uh, um, 
it's almost like you've walked through a doorway and run into you know, like your your grandpa. Like it's that sort of like paternally calming vibe. All right. Um. So as you guys get in, um, Bahamut speaks to you. He says, "I don't remember the voice. I did for Bahamut. Crap." <laughs> <laughs> Old it was man. Steve Buscemi. Steve. <laughs> uh, you you have got you have undergone my trials, Albus, the trial of Grumar. Grumar, who prefers peaceful words of bloodshed. Uh, while you did not, while you did not kill Grumar, you did not pass your test. Cassius, you underwent the trial of Curia. Curia is my spy, and is sent on tasks that demand secrecy. You have passed your task. Leavin, you met Borkad. Borkad is sent to enforce the law when there is no alternative, and you have remained steadfast despite your fears. You have passed your test. <clears throat> Hagrid, you have met another one of my envoys, much like Borkad. Troanoxia is used when there are no options, but she is a peaceful servant. You have passed your test. Thakjima, you underwent the trial of Maroshak. Maroshak is my bodyguard. While you were hesitant, as a bodyguard should be, to trust someone, you have passed your test. Yeah, While I... Real quick. Yeah. My test was against the peaceful one, and I was peaceful, and I still failed. Did I roll? Yes. Okay. Everyone else would have had the same potential That's for failure same. because of dice rolls. Yeah. It was it was fair. It's just random. No, my dice rolls suck. Back in the day, that was one of the reasons why I like being a witch. You didn't have to roll. Right. <laughs> while I am, fucker. while I am proud of each of you. I do have to apologize. Without having, in your entirety, passed my trials, I cannot grant you the boon with which I brought you here to take. This magic is beyond that which is available to the rest of humanity and is, in fact, not permissible for mortals to possess. However, there was going to be made an exception this time. And I cannot give this power to mortals who do not 100% have my trust in, in maintaining and possessing the fortitude to carry out my will and do what must be done. There may be hope yet. The lower denizens, I believe some of you have had an opportunity to interact with them, are fond of deals, and a deal may be struck to grant you a similar boon, though the cost may be greater than what some of you may be willing to pay. Without finding a way to do this, however, you will not be able to defeat Tiamat once and for all. And as he finishes this statement, uh, the the bright whiteness of the room um, becomes all all encompassing. It, it, you stop being able to see Bahamut. Uh, you lose sight of your party members around you, and uh, the the light dies out, and you find yourself back in the um, that opening chamber of the temple with the statue of Bahamut and the seven golden dragon statues behind him. Well. And I pull out one of the fruits from my bag. <laughs> this, <laughs> that was so much weirder than this. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the fruit back in my bag. <laughs> I think I'll have a piece I'll toss him one. <laughs> um, just to uh, to address this right now, um, Sean, do not feel bad. Um, I I wrote this specifically that if anyone failed, that you guys wouldn't get the boon. No, and I everyone had the same chance. The fact these dice, my dice rolls are ridiculous, and there's nothing you can do about dice. Dice rolls are dice rolls. True. If got good dice, they're gonna roll random. They just roll randomly shitty. I think you should probably sacrifice a lamb or something to your dice so that you can maybe have better rolls. I'm gonna and then turn it into your with a sledgehammer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's go this sacrificial lamb, and then we make euros. <laughs> yeah, I'll smoke a league of lamb. Oh my god! 
but yeah, so um, that's where you guys are right now, is uh, in the uh, sort of antechamber of the Temple of Bahamut. Um, are, are the doors still there? The doors are gone. Hmm. Uh, you see uh, in front of the statue of Bahamut appears to be uh, some sort of um, altar, potentially, uh, where uh, people leave um, people who make the pilgrimage uh, using, you know, planar transports and things like that um, uh, leave offerings for Bahamut. Um, so who do you think I, failed this test? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fiddle around in my bag um, and take out the hammer in my bag and leave it on the altar. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will leave uh, the hands and the soggy head because we have no more for it. <laughs> I want to drop a deuce. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Bahamut, we're gonna save your material flame to spite you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this straight. You want us to fight TMA, but now you're not going to give us. <laughs> gotcha. We'll be right we, on we have, it. We have to hurt it first. <laughs> um, hey guys, how about we just all go get high? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, since, since it's kind of past or whatever, um, <laughs> that time our D and D party just turned into us making our characters get stoned. <laughs> so, all right, time to look for magic mushrooms. I got so, a pretty uh, good survival skill. Bahamut was going to uh, grant you um, basically a spell scroll of a spell called Rend Divinity. Um, and Ooh, kill gods. Yeah. And basically uh, he was going to tell... And the reason why you guys all had to pass was because um, uh, basically if Elvis had decided to uh, scribe this spell into his spell book, it would have been um, an act of war against all of the gods. So yeah. that would have happened. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was that? An act of war against all the gods? If I had that spell. If you yeah. if you had decided instead of using the spell scroll as as directed to instead scribe it into your spell book, it would have yeah. been uh it, it would have been taken as as a declaration of war. So but what you're I saying is we're Iran and that was a new game. <laughs> yes. That would have been us, yeah, refining well, everything. It's more like Albus is Iran, and we're the other Middle Eastern countries just kind of watching to see what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. We can't afford this. Not again. <laughs> Not again. Oh, fuck. All right. If we're going to pick one, one. Yeah, if we're, if we're gonna pick one <laughs> can I at least be uh, Kyrgyzstan? So, um, I'll be Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, so you Ooh, guys... Someone's you, got money. You guys are there. Uh, you've been given um, some vague uh, directions on what uh, potentially to do next. Um, what would you Kill guys like Alder? to do? <laughs> I don't think Bahamut said that. Um, so we're supposed to I'm go interpreting for... this as being able... not being able to commune with my chosen deity again, and I'm very upset with Albus. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm going to use... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you be four. I'm actually really surprised that only one person didn't roll high enough for their, <laughs> their oh, test. you kidding? There's only two people that really suck at their dice, and that one that's mad at me is the other one. I don't know. Leavin's but, been pretty bad today. But, <laughs> but it, helps, it helped that it was a wisdom saving throw, because I'm plus 12. On. Right. Well, my yeah, perception roll was a two, five. Four. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys going to do? What do you want to do? Um, so we have to find... Do we have to talk to Asmodeus? We have to... F Did we get names? I thought he said we just have to make some kind of deal with... What did he call them? The lower uh, den... Yeah, he said the lower, lower, denizens. lower denizens. So, or... minor devils. Yeah. As yeah. they walk away, or as they're, they're chatting, can I walk about 30 feet away, sit down... And I'm going to try to uh, commune with uh, Bell. Um, yeah, sure. So we have to be a deal with the devil. Yeah, and I said, sir, it's like, yeah. So, status update. Go ahead and get one of your scribes to write this down. Uh, we climbed a mountain. It was really great. Long feel great. Guess what? Uh, turns out that uh, Ash 
and sulfur are not great for the lungs. Um, so if you want to improve quality of life for everybody else down there, easy ways. Uh, other news, Bahamut kind of sat there and sent us on a fool's errand. So if you want to sit there and look like a big, great hero, make hell seem really cool, get back to me. You can respond to this message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Kagri. How do you know I failed this test? Bah Bahamut said Bahamut everybody said pass or failed. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a deity. He doesn't care about throwing people under buses. Uh, yeah, don't feel, just don't there feel bad because you suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Cassius. Uh, as you get finished with your communion, um, you've never really done one of these before. Um, I also say it out loud the entire time. Right. Yeah. Uh, Hagrid's just kind of looking at you, sort of shaking his head, like that's not how you fucking do that. Um, <laughs> but at the end of it, uh, you don't hear directly from uh, Bell himself. You don't hear um, like a verbal response, but uh, you get you get a impression, uh, like a feeling in your head um, that uh, to to quote Total Recall, get your eyes to Mars. <laughs> Uh, so, um, Bell is essentially saying, like, uh, just get here. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but I think we've came all the way here to go back to work. <laughs> all coming full circle. It's more straight line right now. There's not a lot of arcing. <laughs> um, pass wall straight down. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> They've already built it for us. We're good. Laven winds up 20 feet down in a little bit of a hole that he made himself. Yeah. <laughs> as I stand over him, I goes like, you do realize we're talking about a different plane. Like, this is... Hell is just not beneath us, despite all of the myths. It's... Oh. I don't think... Didn't we crawl out of the ground, though? Yes, but it's a... It's a metaphor. <laughs> I don't understand metaphors. It's okay, neither does Leavin. What is a metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <in> hell. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if... Alright, um... So we have to climb all the way down this mountain? Well, I could kill you again. <laughs> but I don't want to kill you for the fourth time. Well, I remember, I died. I just woke up where I died. I didn't go all the way back. Yeah, uh, we could just we could I'm, just jump off like Um, I'm going to cast right? I'm going to cast animal shapes. Okay. Um to turn us all into giant eagles. Okay. Is this the Lord of the Rings ending right. that we couldn't uh fully <laughs> effectuate at the end of Horde of the Dragon Queen? <laughs> Can I be Joe Walsh? If we're going to be uh, eagles, I want to be Joe Walsh. This was my <laughs> escape plan for that. Yeah. But now if I'm just actually case, using it. Yeah, I would like to be Carson Wentz. Left alive? So everyone who's willing is going to turn into a giant eagle. How long does that spell last for, Laven? Uh, that's a good question. Up to 24 hours. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you guys, as eagles, you can get, despite your incredible altitude, yeah, you guys can get down uh, within the bounds of the spell. Uh, it basically sort of... Um, uh, you know, with, with you guys being, uh, you know, level 17 heroes, so you guys are pretty strong and, and sure of foot and you had the correct equipment, it does still take you almost the entire day to get down as eagles, even. Uh, the incredible heights that you had achieved. Um, more and more obvious to you as every pass, every minute passes as you, uh, you know, go down this mountain. Um, you guys uh, arrive back in the town of Silvery Moon, uh, basically... Um, a couple a couple hours after nightfall, um, the town is quiet. Uh, there's no drow sneaking around this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, so is there anything that you guys want to do uh, in Silvery Moon before setting off for other places? <laughs> huh? I became dumber. What? As a giant eagle? Uh, yep. Oh. But my charisma uh, went up. <laughs> I would like to uh, sit there and uh, get out of the wild shape on the roof of, of the tallest building. Okay. And uh, come out of it in a three-point stance. 
Okay. And uh, whisper to myself uh, a bunch of Batman monologuing that I will spare the party of. Okay. You are the knight. <laughs> and the knight I beckons. I go to the nearest thieves guild and buy a set of dice. <laughs> Uh, before we all took off, I'm going to spend like 10 minutes just walking around because I'm confused as shit about what just happened. <laughs> haven't quite realized I have wings yet. <laughs> you just see this this eagle, eagle fox just like <laughs> hopping and like slowly walking as, you know, eagles aren't fantastic at walking. Just like Going looking from around. car to car. For some reason, a male eagle's laying eggs that ends up breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, eagle man. <laughs> on the entire flight, every single thing that resembles a canary, I am a thing. Okay, you are one well-fed eagle by the time you guys get back to Silver Moon. <laughs> I wonder if eagles are invasive species here. Giant eagles, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I have anything. Okay. Nope. All right. Um, so uh, with that, uh, we will, um, you know, basically have you guys rest again through the night uh, in the royal apartments. Uh, at, in the morning, uh, you guys set out for uh, the Reaching Wood, uh, where you crawled out of the uh, hellish pit, and uh, you will go back. Um, is there anything along the way, uh, keeping in mind those of you who are dead, that um, Bell is? Um, Monitoring your progress and making sure you guys are still working towards his goal. Um, is there anything you want to do along the way? Uh, I will put you guys on the Sword Coast map uh, so you can see. So you guys are up in the town of Silvermoon, uh, which is in the uh, northern part of the map below the spine of the world. Um, and you guys are going to uh, the Reaching Wood. Uh, which is down... Uh, actually, you guys went through the Reaching Wood on your way to the Well of Dragons from El Terrell, uh, but it's down uh, sort of uh, to the southeast of Scornabel. So you guys will essentially go across the entirety of the Sword Coast again. So if we wanted to purchase anything, now would be the time, because odds are we'll run across the city there. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as we don't Charter a ship to Nyanzaru. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should purchase. I think we should purchase some scrolls. That might give us some insight to where we need to go. Lost. Bear in mind too, though, Albus, that uh, high-level spell scrolls cost an incredible sum of money, and you guys don't have an incredible sum of money. So what, div divination isn't that like a second-level spell? What? What are you asking about? What what spell? Hold on. Uh, tell you what, let's we, we can talk about it after the stream. Just like send me a text of what the spell is, and I'll tell you the spell price, um, and we'll go from there. Um, what the fuck? Is there is there anything um, that you guys would um, anybody else would like to do um, before getting back to uh, the Hellmouth? Uh, only what we have talked about previously. Okay. I would definitely recommend purchasing as many health potions in whatever strength we desire. We have 720 gold. Sounds like a plan. What, did they fucking get rid of that spell? No, it's, oh my god, it's four. Um, I think um, the only thing I could think of that I'd want probably is something along the lines of ball bearings, but I'd have to look at the equipment to be sure. Right. Uh, okay. Um, Hagrid, is there any like is there any reason you would want to uh, make a stop at like a shrine to carry Jolith or anything like that? I I'm just offering that up as an option. I'm not saying you need to. Um, just in case you hadn't thought of that uh, on your guys' trip back to the Hellmouth. Uh, <clears throat> sure, I suppose. Um, being as as I am in almost physical agony of, of the vision tempting me and getting me that close to actually being in touch again, um, it, it's it's tearing me apart inside. So yeah, if I if I even think I'm coming across something that could help me reconnect, uh, I want to do it. Okay. 
Um, I just want to ask around if anybody has a an expensive jade circlet they could lend me. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> I tap my pro my pockets and go. Sorry, I only brought my card. <laughs> All right, uh, that is the end of what I have for you guys today. So I'm going to go ahead and end the stream there.